Good evening and welcome back once again to OPC Season 2. I'm Avril, joined with me this evening is Pixie as we head into the final match of the evening. It's going to be Blank Esports taking on Mega. This is a bit of an interesting one for both of these teams for completely different reasons. Mega need wins to avoid relegations. They're probably relatively safe with Machi still picking up losses uh, for most of their games, but look, every win counts for Mega. Blank, on the other hand, need wins yeah. desperately if they're going to make playoffs, right? Mega can afford to not win this. Blank cannot. Blank is so close to not making that top four as well. It's so critical. Let's have a few words now from both sides before we head into this match. Um, it's always great to be here playing against Mega Thunder. They're that team you look over and they're always having fun and always making it interesting. Uh, good luck, have fun, I hope we have a good series. Uh, yeah, let's go! There you go, some fun thoughts from both sides there. I'm glad the energy there, I'm glad everybody's happy about it. But... <laughs> it's like that one guy who clapped, it's like, let's go, and there's the one dude in the crowd like, yeah! Then realizes no one else is going for it. Like, oh man. Like I, uh, I'm always, I'm always quite glad to be the guy that starts a clap. Like, uh, well, I saw. I, it reminds me. Of, like, I, I once watched. Uh, I saw a DVD, which was a, a live recording of a Bee Gees concert. There was one guy at the very back that suddenly went, "Woo!" No one joined him, so he sat back down. Well, it's all about the conviction. You got to really get it in there. But let's, uh, before we get any further, let's meet the teams to find out who we've got yeah. tonight. <laughs> There's only two of us here, and I didn't even join you in that yeah. one. The one other guy that could have joined you didn't. It's going to be Blank Esports up first, the number one team from Australia from Season 2. The runner-ups as well, captained by RQT once again. So if you're unfamiliar with this team, a couple of lineup changes, which are in Hus and Hubu, specifically swapping in for Aita and Kiki. And they've had a sort of interesting run through Season 2 so far. And um, they started out fairly strong. They had a top four finish in round robin one, but now they're stuck in fifth place, trying to get back in that top the four. The thing is, arguably, Huss and Huwu have been just straight up, um, like, it's a straight up step up in terms of picking on those two new players, right? Like, the ceiling is higher. But the thing that Blank have kind of struggled to tackle is the fact that with Atar and Kiki in the lineup, they had played together for an incredibly long time and it had plenty of time to start reaching their potential, reaching their ceiling, which is about where they got at the end of Season 1. So, they're still not at that ceiling yet. How high is it? We just don't know. But they're running out of time. Let's take a look now on the other side of that with Mega, who are... Really, uh, Fireball from Season 1 plus some. And this, so first of all, getting picked up by Mega, then a whole bunch of new players onto the team. Far more than you see here. Plenty of subs available. And also, even during Season 2, the extra addition of White. So, specifically, Aputo, Titawat, and NZNR were on the old Fireball roster. They've still got some of those other members from that roster on the team who have yet to see play. NZNR recently came back on off the bench, replacing Moffat, who was on for a chunk of time. And this is a massive, massive roster. This is now the gelled in version of them than the one that they are sticking with for the remainder of OPC. But they have been scrimming and practicing with the whole lot of them. And one of the advantages they have is they can basically scrim almost entirely in house because they've got so many members on the roster. Taking a look at uh, Blank a little bit closer here, and it's interesting when you look at these two teams because both teams have had fairly, you know, fairly significant roster changes on both sides, and it's about picking up the fresh blood from the Australian New Zealand scene for Blank and picking up some fresh blood from the American, the North American, the European scene for Mega. So both teams have kind of had similar stories in, in the sense that they've struggled to really gel with these new members yet. Mega have started to look a little bit more comfortable now as we're heading to the tail end of the season. Blank have had their ups and downs. Arguably, they had better successes in the first round robin, but now as other teams have started to move ahead, Blank are getting left behind. So I want to say Gunba and I Eat You Up are like polar opposites, right? Because uh, I Eat You Up wears his headset around the back of his head so that it doesn't mess up his hair. Gunba, on the other hand, wears a hat. Like, he's full mess. Like, he's... He, yeah. yeah. Also, Gunba has a beard. Yeah, he's got to hide that big brain of his. I think it was like... I, you almost got his, all, all the hair on his head. 
Gumba's got it on his face instead. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's slowly <laughs> migrating down to his chin. <laughs> so here now on the side of Mega, this was one of their later additions. So they expanded their roster quite a bit in the off season, then quite late picked up White from Korea. And also the other move was Moffat out for NZNR in. This has been kind of the mainstay of their team though. Apudo, their main DPS player, and uh, like, I don't know, main personality of the team, it feels. And Tito Watt likes bananas. And Tito Watt's been an interesting pickup as well because he came in quite late for Fireball in the end of tail end of season one. Now he's been a mainstay of the Mega Squad since the first round Robin of season two, and he's been one of the key characters in this team. Um, the only tank in this roster as well. So for Mega, Kind of said this already, but the time they spent together now with this lineup, this specific lineup, the specific version of Mega has been what's been working the best so far. And they are starting to show those results, but you do wonder, is it too little too late? One of the interesting things with Mega as well, it's kind of a byproduct of this quite large, very multinational roster. You compare to Fireball from season one, all the players were from Thailand and spoke Thai. This season, though, they actually have a mix between Thai and English. And actually, Apudo said a couple of weeks ago... And Korean. Uh, as they, and, and Korean as well, who communicates in English. So what they had when uh, when they made the swap from Moffat into NZNR is the three of those players, NZNR, Apudo, and Tidawat, are communicating in Thai, which shows it means a lot of the coordination between that uh, Winston and 2DPS duo is looking very clean for the most part. That's a benefit but it means that they're now communicating in two languages, whereas before they were mostly in English. So that has been another thing that this team has yeah. had to tackle. But like you said, they really started to have uh, kind of come into their own now. And this is very much a team that's within striking distance for them. But Blank on the home side, this is an interesting one because they love Elios, but uh, so do Mega. That's why it gets exciting, right? Because both teams are expecting good performances here now on this map. There's no excuses here. There's no saying, oh, we're not good at this map. We don't like this map. Both of you like it, both of you are good on it. So really, both teams should have a good showing. And it comes down to who's gonna be better on it as well. I mean, generally speaking, Blank has been the better of these two and they have played on Ilios before where Blank have won, but that was a long time ago. Mega now are already looking better. I mean, this is Mega who were able to take one map off Ardient last night within Ilios which is nothing to shy away from. Like, that is a huge factor now going into this. So this is a very bold pick from Blank going, yeah, that's true, but we still think we're better. We still think we can win this. And the biggest thing there to consider is it was graceful playing the Widowmaker against Ursa's Widowmaker on Ruins that they did beat Ardian. So now when we look at this matchup now, it's gonna be eat up on the Widowmaker instead on Ruins. So is Graceful gonna pull it out again? Are they gonna have this Widowmaker duel 1v1? And who's gonna come out on top? Because now we have seen the performances from both players and they both look good. Well, Ilios is gonna be the place. That much we do know. We don't know who's gonna win it. We don't know who's gonna look good. And we don't know who's gonna play the Widowmaker. All the picks are made up and the points don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> whose cap is it anyway? <laughs> Oh, man. So uh, there's something else I kind of want to touch on just between these two teams, and that is, uh, you know, we've kind of set up the stakes, I suppose, especially on the side of blank here, but I mentioned it briefly, and I want to go in just a touch more depth on that. This is within striking distance for Mega. Mega had a very close series against Hong Kong Attitude, whom they nearly overcame. Blank, the last few times they've met Hong Kong Attitude, have lost to them, and are only just starting to pick up a little bit themselves. Wow, that's a hoop. Well, that kind of goal, you're expecting a lot of the plays also. It is you know what, that, that actually means Mega are going to win now. Well, how it works. maybe it is. We'll have to see from that because it's triple DPS from both. Both teams are going to be running pretty much the, no, in fact, exactly the same yeah. thing. So once again, no excuses. But it's, it's all on the players. Yeah, it's Eat You Up, who's going to be on the Widowmaker. Pudo is going to be on the uh, Sombra. So they're not quite getting that straight DPS match there. Good pressure in terms of sightlines from Graceful so far. Gotta see what kind of angles he's got to work here with because you do have to mind what the most important thing is not just the Watermakers but the two Sombras who has the health back control and so far it appears that Blank have the cap control itself and as soon as it yeah. does open Mega need to respond. Yeah they've got the health pack control and yeah the ground control as well like you said Mega need to respond but it's kind of hard to with this Widowmaker and Sombra here because they don't have that health pack control 
And the Widowmaker is a slow setup kind of pick. So actually now Blank have the setup that they're after and are continually getting down the pressure. Hasto getting pressured out by T21. Good dive by him. And Eat You Up hasn't quite got a pick just yet. No response kill yet out of Blank. They do still have point control and this is taking a while for Mega. This is really still anyone's fight. And that's a response right there, at least from Gumba's side. It's the EMP play. Into now while he's hacked. This should now be a pickup from Blank Esports. During that six second advantage, you're expecting a decent lead from Blank. And they absolutely do get it as they close out on both of the tanks. Actually, White scrapes out with a sliver of health uh, so that he can die off the edge. Actually, Trill gonna punch Punched him. off the side. That was, that, yeah, that was. Uh, that was a brutal way to go, to be honest. But, like, but that's the thing, right? That was what Blank were able to stall out for after losing half so nicely held by them. All right, so it's infrasight time now from Graceful, which means Eda probably has to hide while Graceful gets the good positioning in the Widowmaker duel at least. But there's only one Sombra on the map now. That's kind of the difficulty for Mega because if you do run a Sombra to try and counter the other one, the winning team that has control of the point has control of the health packs. And now, once again, Blank Esports engage. Aggressive play out of RKT and they want to convert off the back of it. And there they go. Eat you up finds his counterpart. The sound barrier from Elf looks good, but they're not actually getting the conversion here. Ends it and though looking to do work on the side of Naputo. Very quick Dragon Blade instantly catches RKT, but he's getting pressured out now. Nice close out of him. Still running relatively even in the fight, but the point is still in control of Blank, and as the respawn is flood in for both of these teams, Blank are going to have more ultimates on the table, namely in the EMP and the Primal Rage. Husk stalling it out for long enough. They can actually just leave it at that now, just shy of 90%. Blank are one fight away from getting it. And that's the important thing, right, because you mentioned ultimate control here, so despite the fact that Mega actually get this camp, Blank have the ability to come back in, get one good fight, and Infrasight's even in there to assist Gumba in picking the right EMP location. No so everything just works out for Blank, but if they do not win here, then suddenly the flip scripts entirely, and Mega Thunder should be in the lead. And they are looking to just... That's a good one to start with, with the self-destruct from Who Wu. And uh, I mean, the placement is all there off the back of the infrasight. It's not just the EMP, really. And White able to throw out a self-destruct, but just doesn't get anything for it. That's a pretty dominating fight out of blank. No casualties. The casualty is all on the Mega side, and they've gone for, they have at least now for two fights, gone from more standard composition. But they're not finding the grounds yet. If they're gonna get anything done, it has to happen here, but only three seconds remaining, 3% remaining. The time very quickly ticking by. Idiop is looking to get some sight lines so that he can pick the supports. That being said, Mega have kind of weathered the storm, and he goes down to Enzanar's pulse bomb. It's actually a good open by Mega here. Losing Elk, though, this is still winnable for Blank. They need Hus to do a lot of work. Oh, going down, unfortunately, to Graceful, who is just barely able to stay alive as Apudo is the one in control of the fight, has the Dragon Blade now, but doesn't need it just yet. Blank, again, can kind of afford to lose this, but... I mean, you felt that they could have been able to win it as well. And the problem is they can, and they also cannot afford to lose that because this is when it starts swinging. That was the most important fight for Blank because they were in the lead a considerable amount. This time that Blank come around, they don't have the same ultimates that they had in that original tank in Mega. They're slowly catching up in progress, and eventually Mega get their own ultimates, and that's when it does get scary for Blank. And Mega have just stayed completely clear now of the Sombra Widowmaker, so Blank are very all in on this. Good catch on T to what Trill low, able to get closed out on and he finds Hus too, is good work for him. Trying to get Eevee up, but does get pressured out for the time being. Actually, very pressured out. Eevee up knows he can't follow it up just yet, but it catches NZ and R anyway. Now Pudo can't really get out of this situation uh, to big safety. Good transcendence from Graceful. And Pudo catches Gunba as he goes in for the transcendence. But who with the self destruct double means oh. this is still blank in control of the point. Mega were able to kind of survive when you maybe expected they wouldn't, but blank used that time to get themselves set up positionally. And that's going to be the overtime ticking down. Contested for a moment by NZNR. No, it doesn't look like they're going to get any further contest. They just need some bodies on that camp, and finally the members do come in. The sound barrier does run out, though, and finally Blank respond with their own sound barrier. Yeah, RQT has his up, and the damage is still coming through there. Apudo getting chunked out. Good pressure on Eat You Up, but he's not really the priority target. t though, getting work done on the point. There isn't actually an EMP here to turn things around for Blank. They just need to do it without front damage, but they are still doing it. Huwu is doing a great job of holding this point generally on lockdown. Apudo does get a couple.
couple in it to look good. Ends in an arc could get a pulse bomb, and that with the Dragon Blade could totally swing it. But Hulu with the self destruct should be able to force them off for that crucial second. And the overtime will disappear very, very fast. Apudo dying before he can Dragon Blade. Now ends in an arc down. White, the last one on the point. It's all over, but the crying is the EMP out. Should just be all it takes to secure it. Overtime does take down extremely quickly, so you have to really look at what went wrong there for Mega because it was rather even up until the point that Blank really started to take control. And they did that two ways. One, Eat Up did outperform against Graceful. Not necessarily in the 1v1, but when you look at the additional picks, Graceful just didn't have the kind of pressure that Eat Up did. Secondly, it was Gumbo Sombra that really came out on top against Mega as well. He got the first hack on the main Mega Health pack on the outside in the middle of the map, and after that, when Blank took control of the entire cap itself, everything was working for them on the Sombra side and also on the Widowmaker side. The thing is for Blank, uh, there was that moment where it got a little bit dire and that was losing the fight on the 99%. Good job by them to recover from there, but you do think that ideally that's exactly the fight they ought to be winning if you're looking at this notion of executing where it counts. That's the thing, right? We gotta talk about the fact that when you're ahead, you need to be securing the win itself. So Blank Esports in a position where they should have the advantage, shouldn't be losing those fights, but we're into a fresh map now. Let's see how Blank handled Mega this time around. Edu up able to get back onto that Tracer, and that puts us on the Genji as well, as to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Apudo. And we have seen Huss's Genji often not quite performing when it counts, so bit of a chance of redemption as the Connect comes in. Now, in that dive, Apudo does get one on the trade back, but that's all they're going to get. The point belongs to Blank now, and Mega just kind of coming in for a last contest, not even able to get that, actually, as Blank at the cap. Yeah, so Blank Esports, once again, they get the early footing, they get the early area control, and they find the first picks as well. Well, Huss got one of those with a swift strike, and now we're starting to build up towards those ultimates. Still waiting for Mega to really find their footing here because it doesn't appear they really get the initiative on any of these fights. Yeah, unfortunately not. And actually, for the first time, we're really starting to see Huss move around largely uncontested, not too safe, not too aggressive. Needs to get a little bit more conversion, but I mean, here's the pressure once again going in along with Trill and closes out on Graceful. They're doing the work on these backline healers. Now they can rejoin the fight on the point. And again, the work is being done. This is Blank starting to come into their own, only losing Gunba in that fight and keeping the point on lockdown. The best part is they're doing it without having to use ultimates. They charge the ultimates while they're doing it, and now suddenly you have a situation where Blank Esports are getting even further ahead. If they can rotate ultimates properly now, you can expect another 40% before we get into the overtime for Mega. They're just getting further and further behind in progress. Before you know it, it's going to be all over. Now, ooh, good pick onto Trill, actually, a little bit deep, but now Huss getting aggressive on the back line. No targets just yet, though, and that's once again where he's actually struggled to go off, and now Mega have a big opportunity. If Apudo can get with his Dragon Blade what Huss could not, they can swing this one out, but he can't quite go for it just yet, has to pull back, but the rest of his team catching Hubu puts them a little bit ahead in this fight. Blank. Ooh, they're kind of stop holding on to this one and taking that transcendence off the table. Now allows them to drop the sound barrier. They get aggressive in their own right. And honestly, Mega, that was maybe their last chance to get a good fight. Well, actually, for Mega, they're happy to walk away from that considering that Huss used the Dragon Blade, which was shut down. Sound barrier from RTT as well. That was just kind of nullified by Mega disengaging. But now Mega have to come in as we head into the overtime, but at least they come in with an advantage. Come in with an advantage, but already Graceful dead and Trill catching a Pudo mid-air. Means all those advantages count for naught as they are at a huge disadvantage. Blank hotly controlling the point and totally reading Mega's setup for what was their final fight. He self-destructs from White, does actually catch Huvu, who was self-destructing at the same time, but it's still Blank with the numerical advantage, with the point control, and now it is all over but the crying. When it really counts, once again, can make a pull it out of Buddha, the only one left alive. Now, can get some kills with this, because Graceful also committed the transcendence in the dying moments of this cap. And now Huss has got his own Dragon Blade. He doesn't even need to get anything, really. It's only a Pudo kind of ducking and weaving around the point. And now with him dead, Mega, the trickle has come in, and what was their opportunity? The transcendence Dragon Blade, the last ditch, didn't pay off, and it is Blank going to take out the 2-0 on Helios. It's a very difficult thing to look at because at various junctures now both teams have thrown away some sort of advantage when you expected blank to be ahead unfortunately they weren't we expected mega to be ahead unfortunately they weren't and still one persistent problem applies to blank Huss looks fine on the Genji when ultimates are not a factor, but when the Dragon Blade does come out it's often he doesn't get enough work done at all.
And a lot of it is his setups are quite telegraphed. If we want to get a little more specific, it's quite obvious where he's going to go and also when. The team does a good job of keeping tabs on Haas, and Haas doesn't really make it all that difficult. So ideally, that means maybe you want to send him in with something like a sound barrier. Really, Huss should actually just be a little bit more cautious with when he goes in for the Dragon Blade. Don't be quite so obvious with it, but at the same time, we do have to give credit where credit is due for him because, yes, when the Ultimates weren't a factor, he was actually showing up a lot more than Apudo was there. And off the back of that, plus the rest of the team, especially Huhu's performance is actually, they get to pick up Elios now 1 0 up in the series. The biggest problem for Mega there, aside from the fact that, uh, you know, there were a couple of misfires from its individual players at individual times, was overall, from a macro sense, it never really looked like they took charge of the game. Blank have consistently won the opening fights, which, by the way, was a problem that Blank had very early on this yeah, season, when they actually, were consistently yeah. losing the ultimate fights, or rather the opening fights. So now that Blank have sort of fixed that, at least so far it's evident in this matchup, that's been a good turnaround from Blank, but it is now a problem for Mega. Yeah, absolutely. And just to kind of touch on the final, you know, to kind of wrap that all up in a bow with that blank side of things, part of being able to fix up those ultless fights has now been Huss starting to come into his own a little bit. We've often seen him be a little bit too cautious or a little bit too aggressive, but the balance just seems to be a little bit finer. And the coordination with Trill is looking a lot, lot better than it has so far this season. Let's take a look at some replays now. Starting off on well, and again, we're going to see that opening fight situation. Look at the positioning that comes out of Trill as they start to aggress on Mega's members. Yeah, so Mega Thunder trying to feel themselves out right now and certainly feel like Blank's position, but it is Blank who engaged first. Trill and Huss together, they find the first target, Elkin Grace will fall down rather early. So when we talk about initiative, that's Blank taking the initiative. They see the picks, they see the players they need to jump on, they execute and they perform when they need to. Now for Mega, they kind of had a counter engage there because Abuda did pick himself up a kill, but it just wasn't enough. They never really pulled the trigger first. And that kill that Apuda was able to pick up, he got because he was sat back defensively because he kind of had to be. They said they had to recall him and he got IE up as that was happening. But the pressure was still there from Blank and he was moving back. They didn't have the ability to go in because he had done that with the swift strike to get out. They had to have that little, you know, a few seconds of turnaround time, which Blank just used to regroup themselves and set up on the point. I mean, it was a good looking kill and it was a good kill, but it's just not the sort you could capitalize on, unfortunately, for Mega. Uh, Mega had some other moments there as well, which kind of you'd expect a bit of showing because Blank were in a stage where they won a couple of fights with a decent ultless charge lead even. They finally got the ultimates and Mega, when they finally got their own ultimates, weren't quite enough. Now we're going to King's Row, which by the way is Mega's pick and we did see this the last time that Blank and Mega faced off. The last time was... Uh, Mega as the home team, and that was, if I'm not mistaken, Lee Junk into King's Row into Volskaya, in which case Blank won all three. You're absolutely correct there. If you're not, then I'm surprised. Oh, I'm, I think I'm. I think I got it. Yeah, I want to. I want to uh, be a little bit fair to Huss here, though. Just by the way, because we do have to appreciate that. Apuro has also not got a lot out of his Dragon Blades, and he is a player who tends to get a lot out of Dragon Blades. On the whole, this tournament. With not seeing Genji get those huge kills on Dragon Blade anymore, sometimes we're seeing it, but it's not particularly consistent. Even Ursta sometimes struggles to get a whole string of them, and he's right now the most consistent Genji at that. So you do also have to respect that on the whole, these teams are getting better at dealing with Genji et al. That just happens to include Huss, who has something to prove by being a new Genji player in this tournament. I think it says more about the team itself because a lot of it is the setup. We talk about the fact that you can't be the solo player rushing in by yourself. You can't be the solo guy just trying to make the plays all on your own. It is up to the team as well to really decide. And Hong Kong Attitude versus, versus Flash Wars was a big proponent of that. You wondered sometimes why Mui wasn't getting the damage done onto the Genji. But actually it was a symptom of the fact that Hong Kong Attitude were playing a little a little bit too patient, a little bit too passive, and not finding the openings to give Mui the space. If you look at a team like Ardian, they give Ursa that space, they consistently pull the trigger, and they always do it before the other team can, and that means Ursa always gets to fire first. Now for Blank, it's kind of 50-50, because Hus sometimes want to go in, but the rest of the team are not quite on the same page, and vice versa, and that's where you're seeing the disconnect. And that's the thing, right? One of the things that Ardian does is they go before you're expecting them to go a lot of the time. 
They are a very fast paced team. They don't take time on the setup. So you've got to imagine if these other teams can tap into that same thing, then they can start having that same success on the Genjis. But it's actually equally likely that people start anticipating audience speed and suddenly we'll see Ursta getting shut down. It's really hard to say, right? It is impossible to just empirically compare the Genjis like that. There are a lot of factors at play. But in general, we would just like to see a little bit more out of Huss still. That being said, he has made some solid improvements. Well, that's the thing is, you have to focus on that because unless Huss starts to pick up other heroes, in which case maybe a soldier, I'm thinking it's probably just going to be the Genji because Blank likes to just play Tracer Genji right now. If you're sticking onto the Genji, you need to bring the results. And that is true for Pudo. Oh, dear. Yeah, Speaking of results, yeah. Pudo's at least proven himself broken, really good. don't fix it, but yeah, the same goes for Mega. That's uh, a great pick, but unanswered out of Blank. So, Blank get the respawns. They're not going to lose too much time for that. It's a little unfortunate. Yeah, it's a nice, like, early, tiny lead that Mega can sort of work with here. As long as they keep a Pudo alive, because Trill is trying to push him out at the moment. So, for Blank, they lost around 30 seconds there. It's not the biggest loss in the world, but it is a deficit they need to make up for. It's a good pullback by Mega. They just kind of stay alive in this particular situation, and they give themselves room to get aggressive as Blank look for the setup. They need to not lose any other members here. They can at least get Gunda back with the closeness of the respawns. Ideally, they want to get a trade kill in as well. They still need to be very careful in the setup. I'm still looking to see where Blank can really pull the trigger here because they're not finding the opening that they need so far. It's been consistently a of finding the first pick. So we had a little bit of an issue on Ilios with Omega. It didn't look like they had initiative. Now they do have the initiative and it's actually blank on the back foot consistently. Speaking on the back foot, NZNR looking to catch the back line of that, but they get the catch on Akudo. Pulse Bomb goes wide out of NZNR, and the conversion is starting to come through. Members of Blank are low, but Mega can't really exert any more pressure. They're the ones getting pushed back now, and the defensive ultimates are about to be here for Blank if they need to commit them, but they don't actually just yet. Now NZNR is at risk of being on the complete wrong side of the site. Eat you up getting him down, and White going down late as well. Akudo commits a Dragon Blade, gets a couple of kills with it, but honestly, he can't get in enough to make it worthwhile, I would say. They're committing hard to this, though, with the Transcendence, but Blank can commit more. They've still got the respawn advantage, and they've got other ultimates to work with, whereas Mega are all out. The thing is, can they commit more? Because Hus needs to get this Dragon Blade. Gumba's not close enough to Transcendence yet, so now that Hus has it, maybe Blank Esports do turn on the heat with the kill onto Elk as well. You do think they have the advantage here. There they go with the Dragon Blade Hus, looking to get the pressure on, and he catches the back line. That's the ideal target. T1 in the middle of the fight with the Primal Rage now run out, suddenly finds himself up a creek without a paddle. And now these last members of Mega a little bit disarrayed here as the payload gets underway. And all things considered, that was a pretty drawn out offense from Blank. So for Mega, you have to be considerate that that was not a that was not a bad defense when you really think about it. You made sure that you drew that you uh, shaved enough time off the clock there for Blank that they don't have that much to work with going for the rest of King's Row. But now you also need to find where you're going to stabilize because as the payload starts to move as we get into the more mobile sections of this map mega have to plant their feet somewhere somewhere indeed right now they don't have the ultimates to do it just yet unless they do get a couple of great kills they want to get really aggressive that does get the transcendence out of gun but now they can kind of convert off the back of that but good placement of the self-destruct catching in you up as well they were only looking for the zoning but the response skills are still there for blank they can go aggressive now and again it's trill and husk really doing work Primal Rage just have to be used so the Trill stays alive, but they're getting the kills, and this is going to result in momentum on the payload, plus they're charging up a ton of ults. Akuto, Dragon Blade or no, he's far too deep in that fight. Payload underway, plenty of ult charge in the pocket now. For yeah, I think for Akuto as well, he understood the fight was over for his team, but he was just looking for a couple of picks, even if he was going to go out. There was no way he was using the Dragon Blade there, but maybe you force out a sound bear from RQT, maybe you got a consolation prize. Blank Esports continue this push on through, and Mega still trying to find their feet. Just gonna wait for these ultimates to come through. Blank, on the other hand, plenty of ultimates at their disposal here. Huge pick onto T to what? Again, the coordination on the dive side of Blank is looking so much cleaner, cleaner than ever before. In fact, as the transcendence out from Graceful, so Blank is gonna back it up, weather the storm while Apudo pulls out the Dragon Blade, doesn't get any kills for it. Now, Huss is the one to go aggressive, gets Graceful, looking for more. He's got the damage out onto these members, and one is plenty enough. Gets White Smack, hey, why not? The rest of the team able to get the kills through anyway. The damage is just a bit too overwhelming on the side of Blank for Mega to hold up. This is good momentum from Blank Esports so far, and the cart hasn't really stopped after it's been kept onto A 
No point in B was Mega really sustain was really um, was really sustaining themselves in into any sort of fights defensively. They never really stabilized, but now can they get the job done because they have the favored respawns? This has to be their best moment. Huge pressure, Husk getting two, even catching Tito up before he could pull out the Primal Rage. Now they can actually spawn camp, especially if the kill ends in an R. Edu up's gonna be able to land a pulse bomb on someone coming out the gates here if he places it well. This is big for Blank. So, unfortunately, quite poor for Mega. Elk has to have this, has to have the sound barrier up is. in time to get this defense up, because otherwise, they don't have a lot to work with. Tito what? Not using Primal Razor has got to be a mistake. Again, yeah, doesn't get a chance to use it. And again, if Pudo goes down, not quite saved by the sound barrier. It was just a fraction of a second too late. Self-destruct nicely placed out of white, but doesn't really get much done. All they've got so far is Huru's mech, but they're just losing members left, right, and center. Finally able to get that Primal Rage out of Tito. What, but Hus instantly going in with the Dragon Blade. Between him and Ethan up, they've just got the damage to close out on these respawners, and that is going to be the cap. Two minutes 30 left on the clock. It's a fairly smooth cap through from Blank. Uh, when you consider what Mega was doing, that they did buy themselves enough time. 2.30 isn't anything to write home about, but it did look comfortable for Blank. So, actual result aside, when you really want to read into how the pacing of that attack went through, it was just all Blank. After that first point cap, yeah, there wasn't really a moment where Mega were kind of digging in their heels. In fact, there wasn't even any moments where they were slowing down Blank in any significant capacity. There was kind of one scrap on the payload that lasted basically long enough for Blank to kill all the members of Mega, and that's about all the time they got off the clock. So on the whole, great momentum play, and I mean, I don't want to over-focus on the one player, but we really are starting to see Hus pull off what he has struggled to do so far this season. Well, we've always known that he can pull his own weight when ultimate's not a factor. That's when it's quite evident that he's able to get the kills outside of Dragon Blade. But still, the question marks arise. What can he do when ultimates do become a factor? Because that is when he makes the most mistakes. Still yet to really see good evidence of that. And I'm going to have to hold my res I'm gonna have to reserve judgment until we get to the end of the match to really see how he performs. Yeah, certainly on the defense, we could see a completely different situation. Because that's the thing, on the offense, actually, you've got to factor in that Trill and I-80 up are going aggressive on the dive there, which does allow Huss a bit more space to work with. It does make it a little safer. It's not necessarily Huss himself. But to also give that credit where credit's due, we're seeing him get some impact now with the Dragon Blades. He's not necessarily getting those three, four, five K type kills, but he's at least getting one and not dying, which is better than nothing, which is it's, what he was getting before. Uh, it's, it's, I guess to put it crudely, it's, it's kind of the minimum expected yeah, yeah. result. You don't want to, you don't want to go into the it's negative. Like, <laughs> that is the epitome of moving the goalposts. You know? it's, it's kind of like, you know, that's the expectation is you got the kill there. That's cool. Absolutely, not going to be committing to this Widowmaker here. Just spotting out in case he could get a uh, headshot off the top of this one. Now Mega just, you know, back to the standards. Oh. Early anime duel. <laughs> why not? <laughs> Hanzo and Genji is like top 10 anime betrayals there, isn't it? That's going to be a good aggressive move from Mega, but it's well reacted to by Blank. No one dead just yet, but on the point now means Blank has to get aggressive. But with the Pudo low, that's the window, and they instantly convert. If you have getting pressure on the side, Mega just kind of had to pull back for a moment. We'll have to see where Mega find their feet here. It was defensively for Mega and Pudo finding those opening picks. So far, though, haven't really found anything to work with the oh. NPR going down again. This is slowing down Mega. They need to get this time, two minutes, uh, two minutes 30 rather, is what they have to work with when it comes to time back. They need to set that target for themselves and say, we're going to do better than 2.30. And again, you got to say, the dives are looking clean when one of these DPS on Mega is getting low. The follow-up from Trill is quick and it is working. But this time, Mega able to get on the back line. That's what they've been after this whole time. Good trade kill from Eat You Up. And they actually get graceful in that as well. So now NZNI has to get a lot of work done. Gets Huss though, so that is that work being done. They're really struggling to stay in this. Oh. Good Pulse Bomb though, gets a ton of damage on a lot of people. If they can close out on these last three members, they do close out on Trill. But actually Blank, there's still got a couple of members on here. Mega get the respawns in, so they should still be able to keep pressure on in this fight, but... It's hard. That's the thing, right? Because actually for Mega, they got the respawn advantage. Blank have to pull back here. They're the ones that have to actually wait for their reinforcements of Pudo. Now that he has his Dragon Blade and Mega, now that they have the area control, they can finally go. 
but also Blank committing before Mega get that third. If they get kills here, this is worth it, and they do indeed get kills. Again, the dive for you up and Trill is looking super, super clean. That is almost a god, only Elk surviving, and Mega, so little time left, and not even getting a third off that. And you wanted to see Mega once again take a little bit more initiative, because NZNR poked open a hole against Blank for Mega to really use it. He got both Eat You Up and Trill, so he had the momentum to really get the movement going to suffer Mega. They were on the cap, but other than that, they don't really pick up anything. Again, Apudo straight onto the back line, catches RQT in net, and got the nice. back get the save Apudo as well as he's out of the mech. That's what they've been wanting this whole time. He does go down, and they force the Primal Rage out of Trill. Blank still kind of holding on to this fight, but Mega can very much close out. Losing NZNR is a bit hard for them, but they've got the members that they needed to get on the side of Blank now. Unless Husk gets a Miracle Dragon Blade, he can't if he's dead. This is at last going to be Mega getting themselves onto the point. It's a good string of kills as well. And this is now Apudo opening up those plays. Last time Insanar gave them a window, this time Apudo gave them a bigger window. Killing Huru mid air, mid self destruct was an incredible play. He nearly made it out alive. And now Black Eagles was want to come in for a last second contest. Can they get it done, or is this a big feat? Yeah, Pudo had already caught Gunba, but there's the trade kill, losing Hubu's mech, and Mega do have the ultimates to commit here as they start to close out on the members. So, I mean, I guess Blank get more time off the clock for Mega, but they're not going to be able to get a bookstore contest, and yes, it does indeed feed alt charge to Mega. So now Mega have to get a lot of momentum here, because you consider what worked for Blank on the owner tank. B Street Space was a bit of a smooth ride, not a lot of contest from the defense, so for Mega, they have to set that as a standard for themselves again, or they are not going to be able to match the 230 times. They're blank set. B Streets phase kind of sounds like a rapper name, eh? Or like a rap group. Like B Streets does kind of sound like a euphemism for the rough side of town. Like, all oh, careful, those are B Streets. But that's a great pick onto Apudo again. They're finding these members and the coordination is clean to get the follow up. Speaking of clean, they go right on in and Haas does catch the backliners. Not going to be able to get any more than that, actually. They do get back in. He almost can't get them right now because the rest of his team is getting kills, but they get the kills. That's the, real, the real problem there is that the it felt a little bit greedy because Mega were already backing out. Any further kills there was just going to buy you a couple extra seconds. You actually want to have an impact for Ultimate when Mega want to commit themselves and turn around the fight. So for Blank Esports, maybe throwing away a couple of the tools here. Now you want to depend on RQP and Gumba with the defensive Ultimates to keep you alive when Mega really get this assault on. He's up in a really great spot as well to pincer in. Backs out for a moment while Graceful pumps the Transcendence and Gumba matches with his own. Who though? Early pick with the self-destruct is what they're after. White may be able to match. They're struggling to get a leg up in this fight here as the closeout starting to come in. And again, like I said, EDUF had a good angle on the fight and was never really, uh, never really responded to by Mega, who are now a little bit pincered in this position and just not getting anything done on this payload. Also getting staggered out on the back end of the fight. Huru did lose the Meg towards the end, so it'll take a while for him to get back in it, but Mega are going to take a while to lick their wounds and regroup. And this is already starting to look like a push that's not going to make a good time. They're just going to have to get any cap out that they can. Can't start to move again, but Blank Esports have made a really good shot of, of stalling up this guy. Not just stalling, but they've actually been winning fights. They've been stabilizing on the defense, and they've been sitting up cleanly on the defense too. Getting the late pick on Huru was good, though, because he was about to get his mech back. This way around, they had to wait for the respawn, which means Blank Look, they're still going to get a contest here, but they were always going to. Mega at least got themselves this much space. This is going to be the big contest now for Mega, because this is when you don't want Blank to actually get this cap over. That's a big catch on the self-destruct, and the pressure end the follow-up. Apudo and Hus both finding really next to nothing with their Dragon Blades, but it's Blank who are on the back end of this fight, just shy of a gong sounding there, and it is going to be Mega getting the push through. Not much time left on the clock, but there is going to be the cap. That's an important cap as well. Now, we got up to two minutes, and while Apudo didn't get the shop on the kill feed, he did enough damage for the rest of his team to shop. That's why Graceful got kills. That's why Teterwatt got kills. And now Mega Thunder, they have momentum behind their backs. Husk now switching on to the Soldier. Let's see if we can get something done on that as well, because Graceful is about to hit that transcendence. And with double support ultimates, Mega have a lot of mileage.
They absolutely do. They were looking to get a bit of an aggressive set up and weren't quite able to, but now with the sound barrier, they can go again. Pressure on the Gunver, and he doesn't stay alive. Now, Tito can get that same pressure on RQT. Does need to be a little careful, but the follow-up is there for the rest of Mega as they're converting the kills. Now, Blank just have to wait for respawn. It's a good kill so far from Mega. They're starting to get a little bit more time, a little bit more movement. This is all very important because they're still charging ultimates. Tito what got a number of kills here. You would have probably have expected Mega to get a little bit more aggressive because they still play passively despite Tito what putting in the link work. This is the one saving grace for Blank as they had the time for the extra fight. The early pick on Elk does a lot to that end. The Transcendence doesn't get any kills converted while it's running and Blank come up big on the kill feed there with just under a minute left. There is enough time for Mega to come in for one last contest. We'll have to see what Mega brings to the table here because they have double DPS ultimates but not a lot else to work with. Last time they had double support ultimates, you kind of expected a little bit more movement. Tidawa gave them the room they needed but they didn't really take advantage of it in a big way. Now Mega are threatening to A, not even camp, or B, if they do, do it in overtime. This is a nice position by Trill. Was trying to get a bit of a catch in among that, but no such like Caputo. Looking to get aggressive, and that's the transcendence from Gunba, but he's held on to the Dragon Blade. That being said, the dive from Blank pays off as Trill puts the rest of the members in disarray. There's no support for Caputo on the front line, and they lose the back line. Now caputo has got to go in and get a ton of work done, but the pullback from Blank is there to address him as Huff's able to get the kill, and the sound barrier on for the team is space for them to capitalize. self the truck from White, though, well placed. No kills. The payload, not not quite there yet, but they may not have the members to get it there either. Huss going down, they're staying in the race here. Mega, if they cap it, it will be in overtime. And they are just barely keeping these members top off as they catch Huss again, but now losing White Smack with the self destruct in from Huru to make space. The pressure is all on, and Huss is even going to pull out a Bastion so they can get the damage. The Dragon Blade from Apudo, they're trying to close it out, but they are looking leaner from members, and the respawns favor blank sound barrier. Could be all it takes to get it over the line. Huss not quite getting the work done. On the Bastion, they're trying so hard to get the work done here, both Mega and Blank, and it's just gone on for so long. But Mega now, if they step off the point for even a second, it will end up being run out of time. t getting kills. I don't believe how long they've stalled it for, but Blank just have not yet Blank are losing. They're finally getting overcome, though, as the pressure from Mega is just insurmountable, and the Ultimates finally came up on rotation here for Mega. Oh, the final moments here. It just seems like Blank Esports trying to hold on, but Mega, they grip his tighter. They want this a little bit more, and it's going to be the full cap out. And at any stage there, it could have gone to either team. It would look so dire for both of them, but it was Mega. When it counts, they got it across the line. Just barely at that, and I mean, that fight ran far more even than Mega could have been comfortable with, but they survived a lot of respawn waves out of Blank with enough time for their own respawners to rejoin them and from that position were able to start getting the kills to close it out. They also get themselves a minute of time, but Blank will have three and a half. So on the defense first year, Blank, if they can hold out point A for a similar length of time, they should be able to fully hold it and then all they need to get is a third. Well, the thing here is that Mega bought themselves a, a I guess, a second wind, if you an will. An opportunity. An opportunity, for sure. But how much of an opportunity? Because can they still turn this into a win? It's a big deficit that they have to be able to overcome here. Blank are still in the lead. That being said, we've seen teams throw away leads before. You only have to look at Hong Kong Attitude and Flash Wolves on Horizon Lunar Colony to understand what I'm talking about here. But Blank, <laughs> can they get this done? Yeah. Or is Mega going to actually pull one out the bag? That's still a fresh wound, isn't that, for Hong Kong Attitude? But you're completely correct. You expect that Blank aren't the sort of team that's going to do that. But the reality is Blank are fifth and Hong Kong Attitude are third. So if Hong Kong Attitude can make those mistakes, then, well, Blank definitely can too. Two and a half minutes actually on the clock for them. Actually, I'm, I'm mistaken. They only get an attack here, Blank, and all they need to get is a third. So they don't even have to fully hold out. Yeah, it's similar to the assault rules here because it's not an escort. We don't have a card at the start here. So it is going to be Blank just having to hold or just having to count rather one third it's not impossible to defend here and white is actually going to be on the creep yeah triple dps because they're valuing the extra damage but eduop has been able to get the wrap around now they're just taking their time on the setup need to not lose any members though blank at this crucial juncture we actually have to see Mega take some aggression here. If you've got triple DPS, you want to make the room specifically for guys like White to shine. Otherwise, if you get back into a corner, A, you're going to lose the camp, and B, that also means you lose the game. 
Good aggression on Gunba, but they go in with a trade one for one. Gunba avenges himself. And he's got the closer respawn. Pua a little low, but Blank pushed the go button now and they pressure out some members. Tito does get one, but he's having to pull out of the fight. And Trill is in it till the last as these DPSs are starting to go off again. Respawns are closer for Blank. They just don't have any members here, Mega, anymore because Okuro had died early, was still too far away. And as it turns out, Gunba avenging, avenging sorry, himself paid off. An important kill for Blank indeed. And you really expect to see from the Mega side, if you are going to run triple DPS, the way that needs to work is you have to buy the space for White. That just didn't really appear to happen. If you're questioning why White is on a McCree, he used to be a DPS player anyway, so it does make some sense. At the same time, maybe you do just... Uh, um, maybe you do just prefer them to play something a little bit more practice, something a little bit more standard and put White back on the D.Va. We've seen Mega have some pretty solid performances on King's Row. We've seen Blank have some pretty lackluster performances on King's Row. But the fact that that ended up being two and a half minutes extra for Blank, I, I mean, they didn't hold out when they maybe could have against Mega, but it still only just barely got over the line in overtime for Mega, and that was a huge proponent in Blank's eventual victory. I mean, they didn't even need the two and a half minutes they had at the end. You've got to say that Blank were ahead in that one at all times, and with that, now we get to set themselves up 2-0 in the series. They take it to match point, and really we're just seeing Blank looking like they are a bit more of their old selves. As good as Mega have got in the time between Season 1 and Season 2, Blank now is starting to really come alive with this new roster. Blank could even be looking better than their old selves because they want to look like their new selves. And let's take a look at what this new Blank looks like as we head into the replay section of Camp A. And this was the initial cap out of Blank. They did lose a little bit of time initially because they uh, just... I mean, it was a slow setup. That's the reality here. But the dive was clean. The coordination between Eat You Up, Huss, and Trill is just on another level compared to where they've been before. And it means that the whole time here, really, Mega are just being pushed backwards and backwards and backwards. They're also not quite drawing Blank far enough forward to leave them overextended and then kill them. So great balance of aggression out of Blank and just no adequate response out of Mega. They get a couple of kills in here, but the reality is that behind the eight ball, the respawns are much further away than Blanks are, and they did end up feeding in some ultimates. It ran more time off the clock, but when you look at how Streets ended up snowballing after that, in retrospect, you've got to look at this and say it was too costly for Mega. By the way, if you remember the start of the replay as well, Enzo spent a very long time trying to secure the kills onto both RQT and Gumba. He failed, and unfortunately, that really cost a lot of time for Mega because they couldn't find anything else. And now they are still shaving a lot of minutes, or rather, a lot of seconds off of Blank's timing here, but it's just not enough to actually get themselves any sort of win. Ultimates were committed into the middle of that. A couple of response ultimates from Blank, but ultimately, Blank come out ahead in a much bigger way. And that's the thing, like I said, when you then look at how much Streets phase Snow for Blank. They got a series of fight wins that were largely no contest. There was one that took a little bit more time off the clock. And like I said before, it was about as much time as it takes to kill six players. Really, like I said, the fight for Mega just ended up being too expensive. Maybe they should have held on to Apudo's Dragon Blade. Maybe they should have held on to some of those ultimates. Let the cap go over and find another position on Street Space to pull a whole minute off the clock rather than a really expensive 30 seconds. Well, 30 seconds, one minute, they, they needed whatever they could get. It's just a really difficult situation for Mega to be in and opportunity cost at the end of the day. A couple of individual misfires here, like I said, Target selection, Enzino really wanted to get the double supports. He couldn't get that. On the flip side, when IE was doing the same thing, he was picking up both Graceful and Elk. But now it's two and zero for Blank. We're already potentially nearing the end of the series in the final match of the evening. Mega have at least one final opportunity to bring it back for themselves. Otherwise, this is going to be a Blank three and zero. What's going to happen? Stay tuned and find out after this.
Thank you for sticking through that break with us as we're coming back to the third map in the Blank versus Mega Series. Now, so far, Blank leading the way, two and zero, and looking pretty good while they're doing it. And also, they have the home side, so now for the third map, it gets to be their pick. We talk about Assault traditionally being their weakest game mode. I will actually be honest, that is starting to change for them. Yeah. Like, it still probably is their weakest, strictly speaking, but they're looking better and better each time they come onto it. And when they've got that home side pick, they're able to just take it somewhere that they're maybe a little bit more comfortable, somewhere like Voskaya, maybe Horizon Lunar Colony. And there it is indeed going to be Voskaya Industries as the pick for them. So, no surprise at all. It's similar to Ilios, though, where actually Mega do quite like this map as well, but. When you're 2-0 up and you're also the team that won Elios, even though you both like it, you've got to feel good coming on to Voskaya. And this is why this map feels really good as well, because once again, there's no excuses. Both teams favor this. you got to think, if this was Mega's pick, they would also go to Voskaya. So neither team can complain, oh, we went to the map that we didn't want to. This is even grounds for everybody, so you expect the best out of both teams. Gunnivor's got to wear a hat to hide that big brain of his. <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, yeah. oh, good to meet you again, Huss. Every single time they shake hands, eh? Like, like they've never met each other. Like, I just like this is the gotta first compliment time. each other. Like, I, I can only imagine that, like, somehow in the middle of urban Taipei, they've got a house so big that Huss and IQT have never met in person until suddenly they're sat next to each other. Yeah, it's. <laughs> They live in the opposite sides of the house. Yeah, yeah. He lives, that's in, what a, that's what he a second, lives in the east wing. I live in the west That's wing. what a second place OPC season one check gets you. A nice big <laughs> yeah. place somewhere in the outskirts of Taiwan. <laughs> oh, can you, man. Can you imagine? Like, they bought a mansion, the blank mansion. The blankshin. The blankshin. blankshin, as it were. That would... <laughs> That'd be uh, that, like, what if you, you have a house that's like big enough such that no one has to see anyone else in it? Like, when you got six people plus that's uh, the key to success. Yeah, plus, they got Serenity and Doctor as well. That's really what it is. You need a house big enough for because, eight people to never see you. Because you know what it is. If that's the case, then it's like you're just playing online again. And that's the most comfortable yeah. environment for Blank to be in. Yeah, exactly. Is, is pretending they're playing online again. And that's that's why Mega are struggling here, because they've got such a big roster that once you include all the subs and all the support stuff, there is no house in Taipei big enough to ho like to have that many people without them seeing each other. And they only got sixth place as well. Oh, duck walk, duck walk. Give yourself to the rhythm. Follow the line. To the rhythm. And it's interesting because this is also the map that closed out the last time we saw Blank and Mega together. And that was a 3-0 and zero victory for Blank that finished on the sky. Again, a Blank victory. And the notion of Blank now being a much better team on Assault is definitely coming true, especially in the second season of OPC. Because in Season 1, they were definitely a poor Assault team. You didn't make the cut. You know, it's actually D.Va that kind of ruins this because D.Va can't crouch. So the demon kind of has like take a step and then pause for a moment and then take another step. I expect that this is blank as well, by the way. Oh, is that a pro soldier? Yeah, who needs to crouch when you can fly and that's the real thing? You <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like that that you know the question mark of like which superhero would you rather have, invisibility or flight? But the question is like crouching or flight. It's like obviously flight. Well, I'll tell you what, it's fight or flight mode for Mega now because this hey is match point against them, and this is also a new composition that we haven't seen them run yet. Blank on a tracer. Enzinana on the Pharah, so it's, uh, it's en different. It's yeah, Enzinana's Pharah did come out in Season 1, but yeah, White on the Tracer is brand new. And they're uh, interesting that they don't want to put Enzinana or Apudu on it because they're both solid at it. And see what work White can get done because Blank are also running triple DPS. And to give a bit of context as well, Mega typically like to run triple DPS with Apudu on a Sombra and Elk on a Soldier for Volskaya, both the tank and defense. And so far, oh. they're at least finding these pickouts, but it is Lucio traded one for one. They take Gunba off the table though, which means no EMP. And with Puff dead as well, they don't really have the members to capitalize on the EMP, just picking out all these DPS members. Not really gonna last very long on this first point. Defense, unfortunately, blank. They lose Hu Wu now. They lose, uh, yeah, the pilot form as well. Trill's the last one here. It's a token for him. They lose, oh, uh, what, a bit over a minute of time here, Mega, but it's a pretty clean cap. It's a pretty clean cap where you consider it's their first attempt, and that's what you really gotta roll in with. But Mega, how do they make this work onto B? Because there's a lot less room to play with. There's a lot uh, closer angles to work with there for Blank as well. Gumba's ready with the EMP, so despite Blank going to go, um, backing off to B now, they have ultimates to work with. 
That's a very quick commit on the EMP, but it actually doesn't catch NZ enough. That being said, converting onto Graceful and Elk may be all they need, even as uh, White and NZ and R get a bunch of kills in here. Apuna going very oh, bring around the Rosie. Strong, yeah, bring around the Rosie indeed, which means he doesn't get too much. So they get to sit on the point for it. Good conk actually onto Apuno. So at the Hust rather than Apuno going down anyway. And that's the thing, now you end up in that respawn territory for Blank. And I think it may actually be just short of a third for Mega, unfortunately, for them, as they now commit more and more ultimates. They're still getting a few kills through, but the stabilization can easily come in here for Blank. Transcendence out from Graceful. They're gonna push for it hard but it is going to be then slowly getting pushed back off the point now, just shy of that third. There's even trades don't really favor Mega because they don't have the reinforcement speed that Blanks certainly do. The uh, silver lining for Mega here is if you're going to back up, you want to force ultimates out of Blank. And unfortunately, the only thing they did get was the EMP. They're not going to get the RQT sound area. Edup doesn't use Pulse Bomb either. So now for Blank, they get to set up the defense once more, and it's an even stronger defense than before. They got the ultimates. That's the thing, it was an expensive loss for Mega, and uh, I mean, arguably it was a loss the moment they went two for two at the start of it, so you got to question the commit a little bit there out of Mega. Well, oh, Mega, like I said, they were trying to feed, they were trying to uh, receive extra ultimates and bait extra ultimates out of Blank, but Blank knew better. They stabilized and knew what position they were in. Now Mega again, still struggling to really get these skills, but they do get hus. Yeah, but again, in that one-for-one -one situation, and Blank, they're not playing ball, they're not committing ultimates that they don't have to. They'll match the sound barrier and commit a Primal Rage, but they've drawn a lot of ultimates out of Mega once again. They're gonna be able to charge up some DPS ultimates for a later fight, but this one is as good as done for Mega. Yeah, this is just gonna be a trill assisting Apudo into going back in the respawn room as well. Hus picking himself up his three kill is pretty important here, because we do need Hus to get that Dragon Blade Brother soon. He swapped from Soldier onto, uh, onto the Genji, and Mega is now losing a couple more extra minutes and still waiting to see exactly how this triple DPS works out despite the fact that Enzo now is off the ferret onto the soldier we're just not really seeing the results to be fair Mega have actually got a lot of really good opening kills there's another one actually for you and they've got that tactical visor available now so when this blank get response kills they're gonna have a bit of a hard time getting a leg up in this fight as the tactical visor committed Looking to get the damage out, but it's largely blocked by Huwu. They get a kill onto eat you up, and Apudo able to get aggressive. They get a chunk of kills, and that's what they've been after. Gunba still hasn't got this EMP, and he started the fight very close to it. You're gonna have to wait for some respawners before he can oh, use it. Oh wait longer. Yeah, going on to the point maybe a bit too early before the team had regrouped. They lose eat you up as well in the stagger, and RQT off the healer. They've now got no healers. They're relying purely on respawn advantage and stall tools. They've got the EMP that they need to commit. And Gunba Number has to go in, this has to be I committed dead. in, and Hus needs to follow up with the Dragon Blade as well. That's the only way Blank can get back in there. The Transcendence is there to counter that Dragon Blade out. He does get white, he gets Elk as well, which is a saving grace. And they're trying to stay in this one, but Mega are looking to stay in it too. They've still got ultimates at their disposal. They've still got members in the fight, and they're still getting kills too. It may be that Blank can stabilize thanks to the kills they got, but if Mega keep getting kills like this, then their respawners are going to come in before Blank can fully reconnect test. Trill popping out the ultimate instantly it's just gets not enough. Down. It isn't enough. And the members are consistently getting killed as they come out the gate. The picks they are getting aren't enough to stabilize off of. And Mega, it's taking a long time, but they are totally in control. It's all a matter of time. And who were the last member alive? Now, a couple of respawners still, but you've got to think with the tactical visor coming out, what can Blank really do here? They're just trying to stall up for as long a time as they can, shave as much time off the timer for Mega, because when we do go in the time bank scenario, this is what Blank got to work with. And for Mega, this is a valiant effort, but actually, you've got to commend Blank. They managed to get more time off the board despite knowing they were in a consistent losing scenario. And it's one of those, you know, you can't, <laughs> the situation is you can't polish a turd, but you can roll it in glitter, right? They couldn't save that fight. That opportunity was lost really quite early on, despite the kills they were getting. Mega were absolutely in control of it. But yes, Blank got as much as they could have given that, in that they got a lot of time off the clock. But I mean, you've also got to think this is a team that can be holding out in those fights can be stabilizing and potentially even should be stabilizing just based off A, the fact that they are 2-0 ahead in the series and B, the fact that they are two uh, spots above Mega in the overall standings. So now on their attack, 
Let's see how quickly Blank can cap out. Well, there is one clear and very evident sign that you know a team is in stall mode and no longer in a mode where they're looking to sustain and re-attempt to reclaim that cap itself. And that's usually when a support player like the Lucio swaps on to a May instead. That's when you know they believe it's over and it's all time now to just try and shave time away. And that's exactly what Blank achieved because unfortunately, the EMP into the Dragonblade combat was the only opportunity they had to bring it back alive. And that wasn't enough. The good thing for Mega, though, despite it, it as well, I guess, in relation to the fact that they got the camp, was the fact that we got to see how that triple DPS really works for them. The problem they've had in the majority of their pushes is they get the opening picks. We've seen that. It's been quite evident. They're good at doing that because they have the bonus damage. But the problem with the triple DPS is you don't have the sustain. So despite getting a first pick, they're losing members. And as, if they're losing members and trading evenly, blank come out ahead. And Blank were coming out ahead in a lot of situations there. That is why there is only that 2 minutes 30, and they started that point B attack what? with three close to about five or six minutes because their point A attack had been fairly quick. Let's see if Blank now can match that point A attack. Yeah, it's going to be Gumba going on to the soldier as well, so it's going to be RQT as the solo healer. And let's just see exactly how big their brain is on Gumba's head. <laughs> it's triple DPS out of the defense as well, so... They really have to get these picks and make them count. White's playing team, everything. Yeah, the team that gets to go more aggressive is the team that's likely to come out on top. They trade one for one. No Winston's on the table anymore. It's all just DPS's, baby. And uh, struggling to get these picks here is blank. They're kind of getting pressured back and Hus going down to Apudo. They need to get more pressure than that. They didn't... Actually, I think they may have just barely got a third there. They did indeed, but they are getting repelled now. No, not quite a third. It does recede Ooh, back yeah, for Mega. Quite. This defense starts to look a little bit better because the first 50 seconds is gone. Blank tried to commit onto the cap. They lost their members, and this is the weakness and the strength of triple DPS. Your damage output is great. You can get the pickups, but you are also very susceptible to getting picked yourself. So the kills come really quickly, but unfortunately for both sides. Blank don't actually have much ult charge here is what's going to really define this next fight. Apudo is going to get into that EMP territory, but they're also really close to Dragonblade and Pulse Bomb. Eagleop is the only one really close to anything like that. Trill, super low, gets closed out on as Apudo is able to commit the EMP, and now it's just a wraparound from Mega and a complete route onto Blank. And that was a good-looking EMP. That's like when you got a Christmas present, you shake it around, and you know exactly what's in it, and you're expecting the good play to come out, and that's exactly when Apudo delivered. Christmas time for Mega Thunder, that was a great play and a well-deserved stabilization on their defense. And this is sneaky. To say the least. Apudo, gonna lay the trap. Now they look to get aggressive. An instant conversion on the E1. White goes in with the Dragon Blade. He only finds one, but one is all they need. Blank do gets a pull back from that point onward, but Hus knows he's on the wrong side of the fight. Hoople oh, took a dive, and Blank have had a lot of time run off the clock for them. Yeah, one and done is all that Mega need there. 152 now. You actually got to be a little bit concerned for Blank because you're looking for the win condition there. Gumbo already feels like the soldier is no longer working. Back onto the Zenyatta it is maybe potentially now playing into a second EMP if Apuda gets it up quickly. But where are the ultimates for Blank? You have to wait for Hus to get a Dragon Blade. And that's the thing, that was such a cheap fight for Mega. All they committed was the Dragon Blade out of white. They've still got plenty at their disposal. Blank already losing Gunba as well means they're not even going to get anywhere near that transcendence but blank had their other ultimates available they need to convert they don't quite close out on a pudo and now he gets the emp gets his health back up blank actually just had to pull back and wait for gunba blank's done a great job in now saving ultimates but a lot of time has been wasted instead so that's the trade-off you've had a long time to save but you've used up a lot of time to do that now you're playing to emp again rqt going down early oh. that's got to be another five six seven seconds you got to wait when you finally do attack now you're going to play playing into elk shambari as well a pudo with the EMP. EMP can nullify the majority of Blank's ult, so this is a very precarious situation now. Blank really need to get an opening pick to make this fight. Well, bait out the EMP yeah, would be exactly. a start. Bait out the EMP, and there's going to be ooh, not quite the commit from Apudo, but the pressure is on onto Blank anyway, and now they're drawn further in to where that EMP could go off. 
Huss going aggressive with this Dragon Blade, but just not getting anything. The only one to get anything so far has been he with the Pulse Bomb. Now the EMP committed, where they can maybe convert. Not White getting the conversion just yet, but yes, here comes White as they close out in Gunba. White's getting pressured out, though. Good follow-up from Hubu and Trill to close that one. But this isn't quite stable yet for Blank, despite those kills. They catch Graceful, but they need to get a lot more. Hubu's kind of keeping this on lockdown in the middle of the point, but they still need more kills than this because with the hacked health packs, the health top-up is there for Mega, and they could get another EMP if this fight goes on too long. Blank at the closer respawn, but it's not going to matter if they don't get the kills. They still can't quite close out on Apudo, who is now seriously threatening an EMP. Enzin and I gets to commit a pulse bomb, and Blank needs to get a lot more kills. EMP committed. They get each you up. They're trying to get the rest now as they catch Gunba. And is it only going to be a third for Blank? Indeed, it looks to be the case. As Huss now on the Doomfist goes down pretty darn quick on that pick. And that's going to be the point A hold for Mega as they keep themselves alive in the series. Now, well played. And at the end of the day, if Blank achieves nothing out of this, what they have done is reinforced and reminded everyone that you can never compliment them too quickly on Assault success. <laughs> because once again, Blank show you, yes, they can still lose on Assault. And I'm going to just be very careful about what I say about them playing and winning Assault again. <laughs> yeah. Blank show you just how bad they can be on Wait, assault. you think we can win assault? Well, let me yeah. show you what I can Let me show you about that. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like that joke, like, uh, people laughed at me when I told them I wanted to be a career comedian. Well, no one's laughing now. <laughs> That's oh, what that kind of feels like. Huh. Like, <laughs> Blank is like, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you how I can not win. And with that not win, <laughs> they're going to be still 2-1 up in the series, still threatening match point. But Mega are keeping this one alive for themselves. And look, Blank do have to be very wary of the reverse sweep here because honestly, that wasn't even close. They didn't even get a third on point A is the thing, right? Let alone capping out B and maybe having it go to time bank and then not quite pushing it through. That was just a one-sided win for Mega. And Mega did really well there. You gotta be able to, you know, give credit where it's due. It looked a little bit shady for them at various points. Uh, in the entire series, you look at Ilios, it's like, mm, they're expected to be a lot better here. Then you go on to King's Row and it's a, a little bit more blank one-sided. But as soon as you get onto Volskaya, you expect it more from blank. This is meant to be one of their better assault maps. And unfortunately, it's yeah. much better for Mega and they prove it. They show us why. And now for blank, I don't think you ever take Mega to Volskaya again. At the same time though, you might not get a chance to play against Mega again anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Eh, yeah, exactly. Uh, but I, like, there's the thing, right? You feel like this is meant to be the one that Blank actually can win, and not just because they're improving on Assault. This is the one that they'd always been able to win anyway. I believe they actually beat Flashfalls on this map in the Grand Finals. Uh, yeah, they did They did win yeah. Assault in the Grand Finals, but actually the most important thing is they won this against Mega the first time we saw them, but now let's take a look at the replay and recap exactly what went I guess wrong or right for either team. Yeah, well, wrong for Blank, right for Mega. And for the opening push out of Mega Thunder, it was this particular brand of triple DPS. And honestly, they balanced this really nicely. They got the controller in the air. Huss had the tools to be contesting NZ and R. There was no mercy here as well, but he just never had good sightlines. And the other members of uh, Mega did a really good job of just forcing him to constantly shift his position about. It got to the point where Blank were actually a little bit scattered. That was the moment where Mega were able to get aggressive. And with that aerial control, Gunba dying was probably the key one because Gunba should have been the safest of all hanging out by that health pack. Yeah, this is really good control from Mega to really get uh, the space domination here. That's kind of what Farah does for your team when you have someone like Internet on there. This is a weird combination of DPSs, especially when you consider that Mercy isn't paired with the Farah, but they make it work as graceful. Can just chuck in Harmony Orb up there anyway. And for Blank, maybe a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit thrown off because they're not expecting this kind of play to come out with. What Mega have actually done is they condition every team to expect a certain attack out of them where Elk goes on to uh, onto the soldier and Apudo plays a Sombra or something like that. But when it's not that, and you expected that to happen, and suddenly they pull out this crazy triple DPS you've never seen before, that's where you gotta really assist the situation and Blank unfortunately didn't do that in time. I just wanna say space domination sounds like an old arcade game or something, like from the 80s. Yep. It sounds like a Star Wars tactic. Tactic. Space domination. Yeah. That's how you. That's how you beat the empire. I don't know. You dominate the space. Yeah. You need Farry. You need Farry to beat the empire. Well, it's the rockets. The rockets. I don't know. Let's take end. a look at the next replay now. This is going to be um, on, on the, the other yeah. side. 
So this is where Blank eventually get held out. And you see the stark difference, right? Now the ultimate's banked up. Edyup gets a good opening kill, but actually, You've got to go back to this thing of Hus just totally doesn't deliver on this Dragon Blade. He gets nothing for it. Then the EMP is able to come out. White, on the other hand, is able to get something done with the Dragon Blade. The pressure is just all there. And by the way, this fight then went on long enough for Raputo to get another EMP to secure the fight at the end. Blank held on for a really long time. But even with the closer respawns, they just never felt like they were ahead of the game in this one. They were never significantly up in kills. They were never using their ultimates to close it out. They were just kind of holding on. Their positioning was almost constantly split. Actually, you've got to be able to compliment Mega here because part of the reason why you didn't see the effectiveness come out of Blank was actually because the EMP landed, and specifically, it landed on Hus. So you don't get those Dragon Blade uh, dash resets. You don't get those big plays from the Dragon Blade that you usually see. And we already know House has inconsistency issues with the Dragon Blade to start with. Put a hack on top of that, and suddenly, well, that's just a recipe for disaster for Blank. Well, it's going to be Mega Thunder's pick. They're taking us to Watchpoint Gibraltar. This is brave. They've had is great that... performances on here, but I'll be honest, so of Blank. This is a really tough one. Uh, you've got to again say that actually this is a map that. Kind of both teams like quite a lot. Arguably, Blank liked the Rhino a bit more if it were going to be their pick, but they're pretty solid on Watchpoint Gibraltar. Like, they do not mind this. I think it's that's a trade up, right? You don't want to go to Dorado because you know Blank. You definitely rather, don't want to go to Dorado. You'd rather practice on that. Uh, so the choice is Route 66 or Watchpoint Gibraltar. And, no Chunga Town yet. And thankfully, no. Um, <laughs> so, and so that's why we're on Watchpoint Gibraltar. This is still fine. Yeah. What does need to be evident now is you've given a potential sniping map for Eat You Up on Cap A, so be quite wary of that. If Mega can have a counterplay ready against the Widowmaker, and not by running their own Widowmaker, by the way, that's not the appropriate counter. They need to have a better game plan than that. Then they can really come across and beat Blank on this. If you think about Junker Town, just by the way, with the exception of Horizon Lunar Colony, it's like the most remote map geographically. Because it's just like in the middle. I was going to say, because the moon is about as remote. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's like, with the exception <laughs> so remote. of Horizon Lunar Colony. Yeah. Like on Earth, it's the most isolated. Because like Hanamura and Lijung Tower are close enough to yeah. one another. Um, I don't know, then you've got like all the ones around It's because it's in Australia, but, right? And Australia yeah. is just nowhere to be found. Yeah, in the world. yeah exactly. It's well, actually, down here. Actually, Hollywood would be in Los Angeles, so how far away would that be from the nearest map? I don't know, I'm really, I'm trying to rack my brains, like trying to remember all the maps. And actually, I guess if Volskaya is isolated enough in Siberia, I want someone to like draw a map of like that where, hard. or like a, a, a globe of where all the maps of Overwatch are and like measure the distance to figure out which is the re most remote. Like, yeah, why is Winston's Lab not done sounds that? Sounds like a lot of work for very little reward. Why is so what Winston's Lab do? A lot of work for a little reward. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was oh, uncalled. That's, uh, that was unneeded. I love that was Winston's unneeded. Lab. We love Winston's yeah. Lab. <laughs> Everyone loves Winston's Lab. But in all seriousness, like, I, I want that to be done. Like, so if I haven't bothered you enough, if I haven't insulted you enough, Winston's Lab, could you please do that for us? <laughs> that's cool. I'll be insulted for them. So that, that's, oh, okay. <laughs> that's, the, yeah. <laughs> that's modern justice for you. So that's going to be Watchpoint Gibraltar being the pick now. Let's just sort of bring up some relevant performances because this was where Mega were able to get a really great win against Machi. I'm trying to remember Blank's last performance on here. It was solid enough, if I recall correctly. I'm just trying to remember what it was, man. Uh, they don't go here often. The reason they don't go here often is because they pick Dorado. That's the thing. It's, yeah. They it's, difficult, with, exactly. it's difficult to recall Blank's experiences on Watchpoint Gibraltar or even, uh, even Route 66 for that matter because. You just never go there. And also, uh, they don't go here very often because they just don't like Spain very much. It's too hot. They don't like it. Not a fan of... Well, I can't say they're not a fan of the Mediterranean because they go to Ilios all the time. But they like Dorado. You know, they they prefer, like, the South American Spanish speakers yeah. to the mainlanders. It's because it's know? nighttime, so it's not as hot. Exactly. You know, it's not too bad. Like, it's a little bit humid, but it's, it's all right. It's all right, all things considered. So we're looking forward to seeing... Now, once again, a triple DPS from Mega. You got to think this is this is something they came up with this week because we did not see any of this last week whatsoever. So now Mega, in this past seven days, have thought, you know what? 
the solution is to run wide on the DPS. So let's see. Specifically Tracer as well, which means they don't get ends in and up or a Pudo wanted. But this time it doesn't pay off as they lose T to one. Now these DPSs have no frontliner. They have to go off really, really hard. Well, the thing is, White was a he was a tracer specialist for didn't it, a career before leaving the team, so the it's not really that unprecedented. And Inzanar plays a decent soldier enough. Apuro's your best Genji. This is definitely the best DPS lineup you can afford to run Omega. And that's the thing. I mean, it's not unprecedented. You're completely right in that regard. But this is also, you know, a new thing. Fresh, hot out the kitchen. Apuro's dead. A little, a little bit, bit uh, less fresh and a little bit yeah. less new. Gonna not quite close out on Tidawat though, so that was only a soft boiled one. But White's now kind of on the wrong side of this one. They got a couple of counter trades in that though, so Mega have the opportunity to maybe save less here. They're keeping the card contested, and Blank are actually struggling to close out these kills here. Well, this is an important angle for Mega to hold because as this card position is just uphill, they can just get this battlement control, and they do have that so far. Make sure Inzana is well, secu well secured by his DPS, his, well, rather by his supports. Make sure he's well protected protected as well. Apuro and White can get the job done around the flanks. Well, Hus now taking down Apuro. And interestingly enough, every time Apuro dies, Hus follows straight away as well. So it's just Genji trading for Genji. Yeah, it's because Hus is just going really deep to get these kills. And honestly, Blank were behind the eight ball in that fight, even though they got a couple of kills for it. The health bars were too low for them to do anything too aggressive that would have actually resulted in a fight win. And you need to see Mega take initiative here and be aggressive quite early. Notice the EU ops on the left side, waiting to aggress onto these supports on the left. That is a good dive, though, out of blank to route out Elk. And now they wrap around back into the rest of the fight where White is a little bit isolated again, though. Hus does get picked in the mix, and who were getting pressured out as well. The response from Mega has been there. They've kind of weathered the storm, as it were. Pelo does get a little bit of distance, but now Mega are able to get aggressive. They don't even have to commit too many ults for it. And it's interesting because Blank Esports had the option there to commit either the Sound Barrier or the Transcendence, and they now they're do. committing the Sound Barrier while Eat Up is dead, so the timing is just a little bit awkward from Blank. House goes in with the Dragon Blade, and Naputo is actually too low to use his own, which is a little bit of an unfortunate piece of timing, and House is able to get the couple of kills off the back of that. The cat went yeah, through. Yeah, the cat went through. Mega a little late on the eight ball with that Transcendence, and they lose members for it. That's really big for Blank. They now get to occupy the space in this hangar that Mega would have wanted on the defense. And both teams are just kind of misfiring here. You have a situation where Blank just commit in a scenario when they already lost a member. They should have used the sound barrier earlier if they were going to commit. They didn't. They chose to anyway. But then Mega just step off the cap and give it away to Blank. So now, who was, who was outplaying who? It's, uh, it's just really unclear. <laughs> I think you'll find it's who was outplaying who. The answer, well, Hus goes down though. He's the first one dead. And this time Apudo was, oh, I'm a liar. Apudo's dead too. Gunnar's got this transcendence that maybe no, he, nope, he doesn't. No, he also doesn't want to commit. I'm going to stop talking. I'm just going to stop talking. Well, the Akkad does uh, still maintain some sort of movement here. So at least Tito, what, what, rather from the Mega side, they now stop it up with Mega. Tito, what? making sure that the rest of the blank guys are not going to get any more distance done. And Blank going to decide, are they staying? Are they leaving? What's happening? Gumba has respawned. This is now when you do want to reconcile it, recontest that card with the ultimates that you do have available. This has been a little bit messy from Blank, to be honest. They're, they're kind of half committing, and they're not closing out on any kills. Also not opting to pull back when maybe they should. It feels like they're just scattering themselves, hoping that everyone will get one pick, and therefore they'll kill six people. That is a very early Primal Rage out of T1. And this is an opportunity now for Blank as that Primal Rage is about to run out. Now, the thing is, you don't really see too much played out of that Primal Rage as well. It did seem like one that was just going to keep T1 alive, which you can respect. He needs to be alive, but now Pluto, Dragon Blade straight into Transcendence. Good response from Gum. Yeah, Huss is able to get the kill into Graceful as well that, while that's happening. So now they withered the storm. Picking T1, Naputo is hard pressured out, going to lose his life as well. They don't actually need to commit Huss's Dragon Blade. And this is the kind of fight they were looking for. Very very, very cheap in terms of ultimates committed, and they got a couple of good ones out of Mega as well, plus the cap. So it was a good delay, all things considered, from Mega, but otherwise, Blank do get that cap on through. And this time around, it wasn't a free cap out the way that Mega gave on A. It was a very hard fought one, but C is where you got to think Mega can get the stabilization. Ultimates are starting to come online now. You have DPS ultimates, most importantly, and on top of that, Elk's close to Sound Barry. On the meanwhile, Blank Esports got to see more distance out of Hustle's Dragon Blade, and here it comes. Well, he gets ended an hour off the bat and uh, doesn't get much more, but he's got some pressure out at least. 
and the rest of the team getting aggressive now able to close out on graceful they can get a couple of more then they can very much get this payload uh, threatening the cap right now it's just free push time for blank esports as mega wait for the respawn and so now that they have once again they have a lot of ultimates to play with here but when and where they're going to commit these because blank have spread themselves somewhat thin as the card does now approach now it's go time yeah the sound barrier out from rqt means mega are actually drawn in quite far forward ends it and r has to completely reposition oh while trill. The, yeah trill Good block in there for that front moment there. They don't quite close out on Enzo tonight. Initially, it takes them a while, but Huwu has to commit the self-destruct. Does just barely get back in the mech, it seems. They are able to preserve that. Have finally got the close out on T1. Here's a Pudo, though, trying to turn back around. Kills Hus, but dies. Transcendence now from Gumba to get them over the line. May just be all they need. Graceful, not quite. There he goes, getting his at the last second, but he's not really saving many members, just topping up white. And a good pulse bomb on T to one should be all they need to close him out before he gets the primal rage. Trill does go down in the trade kill, but the kills are still coming up blank, and that should result in a cap as well, with just under two minutes on the clock. Good out plays from the blank side. We really look at what happened. The Inzana was trying to go for the setup with the tactical visor, going to the higher ground. Trill immediately drops a bubble in front of him. Then the Huru comes up. Matrix ready to go. Kills Inzana because actually you don't need too much Matrix in that scenario. The bubble's already protecting you. Saves his own life by using the self destruct. Apura tries to save his own team. Dragon Blade comes out, instantly gets shut down by blank, and suddenly the tables flip in a scenario where you thought that mega were ahead and they should have been ahead they had the ultimates to play with but they never had the opening they never had the setup they never had the positioning blank continually held their ground and made it work and that's the thing right when blank started to get it in their favor for that final fight it was all positioning it was forcing NZNR to completely change his position. And while that was happening blank were just exerting pressure then when NZNR finally got a chance he was just stuck and then he died he got nothing done in the first parts of that fight and while that was all happening blank kept pressuring out the other members of mega 2 even when they weren't necessarily converting kills they were getting space getting movement on the payload and then after everything was exhausted for mega then they were getting kills too yeah i guess it's difficult to say exactly you know from a decision making point of view that's where you want to go as a soldier anyway for engine so i guess hard to say whether he was really forced there i'm gonna to have to say probably not he wanted to go there anyway but as well, well it was read unfortunate by blank. timing as well it was definitely unfortunate timing but well read by blank to see the movement to predict the movement and have the correct response in fact having the correct response at most of the junctures there including the big one into a product because that was one of the tools that mega needed to really execute to get themselves back in that defense and that's the thing you're completely right the soldier wants to to be there the reality is nznr wasn't there in time he was kind of making that movement a little bit later than he maybe wanted to so just wasn't quite ready for the push out of blank but now on their own offense blank actually nearly got held up on point a Let's see if they can maybe do that to mega or where mega are just gonna get a whole bunch of headshots Let's see exactly what White can hit with us because this is the first time that we're really seeing White flicks onto all of these DPSs. He's barely played D.Va tonight on most of the maps and now for Blank as well. RQT playing the Mercy. We haven't seen him play anything but Lucio so far in the series. Whoa! And that is a headshot. That is a second That's, headshot. Yeah, it's th those are indeed two headshots and they're going to kill everyone else. It's just who we man alone. Blank will get enough respawns in time that they will get one more contest on point A, but that was pretty dominating. What Blank won't get is the positioning here because Mega should be setting up quite aggressively, should be taking the battlements. As you can see here, Enzidana and Tita One already in position from that white now into the back line in the server room, should be taking the bottom section while the other players take the top. Shrill already getting hard pressured here. They're looking to get aggressive though. Blank aren't going to be held up for too long with that battlement set up out of Mega, but the payload's been moving still on Blank to get aggressive and get kills Hus, the first one to go down and the pressure is just there for mega because they're the ones getting aggressive themselves and another almost full team wipe now gunba the only one avoiding the gong and that is super fast cap for mega and super smooth as well we haven't seen any sort of resistance here from blank they still haven't really seen what they can do on this defense and you won't see it for a little while longer they're not even really getting onto white because they can't get past Inzana or apuro just yet 
Those two early picks on the hangar phase mean White just gets free reign in terms of the positioning. This is similar to what Blank were able to do to Mega in this situation, but then it did actually take them a little while to start getting it over the line because they kind of faffed them out a little bit. And smartly, Blank actually come into the bottom entrance and not the top left one that White was expecting as well. Otherwise, you would have seen another very quick headshot from White, but now, instead of a headshot, it's going to be T to one. Yeah, that's one for one, but not when Huss is done. And that's going to be two for one, unfortunately, for Blank. And that means the payload's still underway. They're struggling to get these closeouts. Their members are just too low. And they're spending a bit too much time trying to catch White here while the rest of the team gets picked apart by the other members of Mega. And off the back of that fight, that should be a camp here as soon as Chill goes down. And the biggest issue is, yes, White was a big problem onto A, but now that we're in the hangar into B, he's no longer the biggest issue. It's a Puro and is that actually getting the kills. And this is evident. Internet is so good. <laughs> he's even getting, getting it. He's, he's killing, killing himself. himself. He's getting so many kills. Even he is dying. But this is still blank going hard to try and get the stabilization. Catch on T to what? Plus that self kill from Enter to now has been a big window. Now Trill goes aggressive and they might actually be able to do it. This is the thing. You're right, White isn't the biggest threat. He can't actually affect this fight too much and losing a Pudo. Blank have indeed stabilized catching Graceful and Elk knows he is not long for this world either. It's all just a matter of time. That's actually a really good turnaround by Blank. A really important one as well because this is where their respawn starts to favor them. Their respawn is just around that corner mega have a lot longer to run through and a lot less ults to play with now graceful he's near the transcendence but other than that flank esports are well ahead and should be able to stabilize quite nicely pass nearly a little bit too deep but he's going to be able to pull back to the team safely the team does oh Ouch. dear great headshot takes the dragon blade instantly off the table and the transcendence makes it hard for blank to kind of fight through this and get kills just gonna have to bide their time for a second apologies for the technical issues there and there we have it white He's kind of got, got a white screen now. Yeah, he's got a white. Well, it's, it's a little bit more grey actually. Uh, still a little neo cubist. Eat you up, good kill on T to what? But it's just all getting traded so far. This does burn time off the clock for Blank. Uh, they're happy enough with that. Haas now finally rejoining with that. Oh, 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 child! White with the quick melee kill on to Haas. And ends it and now gets a whole string of kills. That's going to be enough for Mega to convert this cap in just a few moments as they close out on Trill. Good job by Blank to take that much time off the clock, but they still need to find the... What was that? Oh, I think I know what that was. Huss respawned too close. He respawned just yeah. before the camp went through, so he's just got to take a quick dive off the side so he can respawn with his team at C itself. And White is still sticking onto the Widowmaker, and I guess why not? Why change when actually you're hitting a ton of shots, you're dealing with Huss, even when you're not hitting the headshots, just smack him in the face with the butt of your rifle. Again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And he's able to avoid the dive from Trill as well. So Trill kind of has to turn his focus back around. And the payload's still underway. That's going to be the commit now from Mega. Looking to get aggressive. Not getting too much for it, though. Husk getting the kill on Enzo and now in Gunver. Transcendence has to be matched now by Graceful. So the pressure is actually good out of Blank. Mega are just kind of using his ultimates to stay in the fight. But Blank are actually the ones doing the damage. Even trades. Finally, even trades. But the health bars are low from Mega, so Blank still have the members to close out kills. They're going to get an opportunity now to stabilize in earnest. Oh, Blank Explorers, three minutes and four seconds remaining to get this defense underway. And they have, once again, just bought themselves a little bit more time, stabilize a little bit longer but how long can they keep this going before white gets a started string of headshots once again it does get quite dangerous i like trill's positioning here because this forces white to play a little bit further back how long can this go on how long can this go on free me. well this is going to be mega trying to get free of this hold for now to what getting aggressive to make it work but the pressure's there on to white maybe not the right target first out the gate but the rest of the team is going to convert other kills anyway who were also able to preserve the mech and they get some crucial ultimates charged up as they again just kind of beat back mega by getting a little bit more proactive and plainly out fragging and controlling the space is really important. Where Huss was standing right there on the battlements, that's exactly where White wants to stand. So if Blank can get aggressive, if Blank can get in the faces of Mega, White will never have good angles that he truly wants to work with. And he's always going to have to be sitting way too far back. We're already getting well, up. This is now the opening that Mega can use. It really is. But Huss is going to have someone else to say about it. Apuna not getting much done and indeed going down. Mega do get a couple on the board. White getting another one for himself. 
Nicely plays self the shock from who it does stop the rest of the mega side from capitalizing massively But they're still getting good kills through blank however have the closer respawn So mega maybe just need to back off from this one once again You're seeing the biggest issue with this triple DPS lineup. Yes, you're getting kills Yes, the damage is great, but actually your own HP suffers You're losing a lot of members and the trades do not work for you in a C push because the defense Ooh. respawn work for them instead That's a big pick White actually gets Huwu's mech and then headshots the pilot form Diva. Now close out on Hus. He's got free reign over these sight lines. Blank has stalled out a lot of time here. Mega will get less time in the overtime, or rather in the time bank. They do actually still need to get the cap. Good pick onto Gunba, opens it out. But Blank, they're staying in the drill. It's a hello drill indeed. They've still got the respawn advantage. Hus again. Yeah, Hus again indeed going down. I wonder if that was a quick melee too. But they are getting some response kills here and there. They're gonna get some respawns, but now Mega on the cusp of capping. What can Blank do to stop it? No, they don't stall up the cart. No one was able to touch it in time, even though Eat Me Up was alive. So here's the biggest issue, despite it looking rather comfortable for, for the Mega side and Blank kind of staying on the back foot there. Mega got a worse time now heading to the time bank than Blank did. So Blank had a much more smoother run, just kind of all around throughout the entire Watchpoint Gibraltar attacking phase. So yes, you did see some good moments there in the in the majority for the Mega attack, and a lot of that did come from White. And even when White wasn't getting the kills, he was consistently forcing members of Blank to chase after him, to deal with him, because every time you left White alone, that's when Hus was dying. And so Trill, as the main tank, instead of protecting his own team and really being in the front line, he had to go and chase White on a wild goose chase. A wild... Spider a chase. white goose chase. All right. I mean, I didn't really think the goose's color had anything to do with it, but you know, some of us don't Ooh. see the world through that lens. Uh, that got really confusing for a second. I thought that that pole was a flag, but it was actually just like the triangle was a bit of wall behind it. In any case, the saving grace for Blank there actually on their defense was the fact that they were able to just barely get that hold in the hangar at the very end. It looked like Mega were actually going to cap, but Blank really pulled that fight out there and then were able to just stall up that little extra bit. Then the hold they had on C was where all that time was lost for the Mega side. So they go into this with about a minute extra. They can stop up Mega for 4.A. They actually set up really nicely to win here, so, Blank. So Mega should really be looking to camp A here. That's the realistic goal. They shouldn't get too much more further than A. If they get A at all, they should be quite happy with that result because then Mega can look for an A full hold against Blank. And that's their path to victory. All right, well, triple DPS again, and White's just having a tour de force of what he can play, trying to just demonstrate his diversity. Shul, though, bit far forward, drops the bubble, but it's a little late to save himself, able to just barely get out, but that gives Mega a window of opportunity to get pressure in, and they convert as they pick RQT and spotted you up on the backside as well. Eops lost, so he's kind of just hanging out with Nani at the moment. He needs to be a little bit more impactful, and he needs to be able to come in when Blank won't attack here. When the respawns do happen for Blank and they regroup together, now you can see Eop coming into the back line. This needs to be where he's effective. Blank haven't actually regrouped either. They haven't been able to top off the health bars and gain their positional ground that they've been needing because the pressure's been good for Mega, but the pick on t what is what cues it out. That means Mega at the numbers disadvantage as the overtime begins. They lose a Pudo, and Blank just kind of put the foot on the gas. They're going to lose RQT, but that's all they'll lose because that transcendence running. Dead Eye, though, could be a big one. He gets one, and they got another one in the mix as well, so Mega still have an opportunity. They're going overtime to get it, but it's just not quite working, even with these reasons. Spawns. They can't quite get these last few members on the payload. It's just T1 and Grace will hold on a second. They're able to kill you up and Trill. It's just Hust and RQT stalling this one out. Hust needs to get on this one with a Dragon Blade if they're going to stop it up. But it's not looking like it's going to oh happen. Boy. Mega barely getting the cap. That's a good cap out from Mega. And again, it, it, one that was really important. Any bonus distance they get here is just that. It feels like a bonus because just getting the A in one minute is a very big deal in and of itself. Blank now really have to hold. They cannot afford to get too much distance on this card. Otherwise, Blank are going to struggle to get anything done on their own attack. Blank are playing smart by taking their time here, but they can't take too much time. They've got to go. Eat you up, though. Headshot it, and Haas <laughs> can't get in. That's with the DPS gone. Play. Yeah, because Graceful had the Transcendence running. Now another Dead Eye doesn't get too much for it, but they're getting kills anyway, and Blank 
just totally miss fire. And the worst part for Blank is they actually have a ton of ultimates. Who has a self-destruct as well? RQT, Hus, eat up. They have all of these tools, but now the cart continues, and this is the nightmare scenario for the Blank side because suddenly those ultimates don't count when Mega can match you ultimate for ultimate. And that's the thing. Why were they trying to get Hus in on the backside with the Dragon Blade? Is that a cat? They at, oh, not quite, but my goodness, that had me sweating. The overtime will tick down pretty quick, though, and they get the opening kill. Now Hus needs to make it count more so than whatever Raputo gets. Both, as it turns out, are going to get nothing. Raputo getting the one kill at the back end onto Gunba, who is the closer respawn, but there you have it. They can't step off the payload for any too long. Raputo and Elf both dying. There's not any members left to keep the payload contested as Tidawak goes down. It's just NZNR. Oh my goodness. I thought it was over just for a second there, but just shy of that cap, it does look like Mega will at last get rebuffed as White goes down. And that's nearly a B camp, so I think you've got to be quite pleased with that for Mega because, like I said already, anything past A feels like a bonus. If you nearly get a full B in there, that's a little bit better than a bonus. You almost doubled up, and it feels like double or nothing for Mega right now. And certainly for Blank, it's closer to the nothing side. This is now a monumental task. Full B just sounds like it's got something to do with honey. Like, like how you get, like, organic chicken, like, full B honey. You know? Like... I don't know, like, like, there's no, like, synthetic sugars. It's just, like, 100% made by bees. Because, like, often they take All the right. honey and they do process it a little bit. Like, no, this is full bee honey. Straight from the bee. <laughs> Direct from the bee. We, we milk the bees by right, hand. It's right uh, from the source there. I don't, I don't really know what to make. Look at the... Uh, you don't what's interesting honey, to note here is if you see where that golden rectangle is of, you know, of, of victory, if you will, for Mega Esports, it's basically right at the end of B. That's just about as good as capping B. In fact, <laughs> if they had gotten B, that would be disgusting. You're not expected to get that much distance in an overtime scenario when you only had one minute to work with on your own offense. This is why it's so unprecedented and why it's now so difficult for Blake to reach the same distance considering they only have two minutes and one second to work with. The reality is Blank were off to a good start on that point a defense fight that they were looking to make it happen on the one that took it to the overtime and then completely whiffed the one good fight they got on point b the earlier fight that they had mega going for a very high risk high reward setup so far it's reward as they pick gunba but if they lose too many members then it's going to be the risk side because gunba's just going to respawn come straight out the gate they lose a pudo and tino and white recalls to the far side of the fight loses his life as well and blank don't mind that iqt is dead there because he's going to be able to rejoin they they get Elk and they get Graceful. Now they get to take the aggressive position on these battlements to give uh, Mega no room to contest A. And it does feel like, once again, an all or nothing play from Mega. They're, they're trying to double up and unfortunately they lost out and this may just cost them an A hold. They only had two minutes and one second to work with for Blank, but if you can get a good fight like that, you can convert that now into a second fight win. Suddenly two minutes and one seconds is all you need. Well, that's a pretty good pick as well onto Gunba, and they close out on Hus. They need to get a lot more than just that one member, and they can't let this be a long fight either. The clock pressure is big, but they're losing members here. Just too aggressive. Weren't appreciating where Mega was set up with this triple DPS. And this is where it starts to get really scary for Blank because Mega are stabilizing on A. Mega on their own A offense never allowed Blank to do this. They just seam rolled on through, kept A with relative ease, and Blank suddenly you're nearing that overtime and you haven't even got A yet. You need time to get through B. You need this 40 seconds that you currently have to actually get into B, not just get A. What you need to do if you're blank, you need to win a fight and then win a fight and then win a fight and maybe you'll get that cap. Apudo, oh, and who was losing the mech as well? Already off to a bad start for blank. Now Apudo can commit the dragon blade, gets another one. The transcendence from Graceful keeps the team safe. And as it turns out, the only ones who are going to die are T2 and NZNR. Now blank have got next to no time left. Yeah, we're going to get into the overtime pretty soon. Now getting the is but... pretty good, but Hus, no, he doesn't have a dragon blade Every anymore. Single time 
He gets nothing done with that ultimate, and I regret complimenting him on Elios. Now Apudo with the Sand Barrier on continues to get work done. I don't know, maybe a, a Hubu's gonna get a 5k or something to save this one. That's about all, all they have to happen. work with. Exactly, it's all gonna happen in overtime. They've got a closer respawn, but it doesn't matter if they don't get kills. Ends in and out with the tactical visor. They get so much pressure out. Hustlers get some through though, and that's the self-destruct that they needed, but it's not gonna get many. Only gets graceful, but Mega are getting beaten the back. Cap. Hold on, the cap! Ends in and out's on the wrong side of this fight now, and I don't believe it. <laughs> Blank, yes, thank you, I'll, I'll have another. All right, well, it's not quite over just yet. Mind you, we're into the overtime, so yes, they got that cap, but they have to get it all the way to B, so the setup here is important. They have to win at least another two fights. That's not an easy thing to do, especially not when Apudo's nearing, uh, nearing another Dragon Blade. He's had much better successes overall on the Dragon Blade than Hus so far. The only saving Grace Blank have is if RQT can get a Sound Barry in time, and the, even then, they need to snowball into other ultimates because they have to win a second fight. Blank just had a full-on hold my beer moment. And by the way, they don't actually need to win a second fight because Mega didn't take an early one. Sound barrier out means Apudo can't use the Dragon Blade just yet. They don't have any defensive ultimates either. Dumps. Now he goes. Let's see what he gets. Because if he gets shut down, it's not going to count for much, but he gets the kills. They get three. Where is the damage from Blank? Where are the counter trades? They're getting held up. They're getting rebuffed. All they've got that's is it, that's what it. eating you up is done. That's it. I don't want to say I don't want to say the two words, but look, what about reverse sweep? <laughs> it's an, it's an it's uncomfortable really it's an uncomfortable two words to say, but it's starting to look very possible. Look, you can forgive Blank for dropping assault because it's their weakest game mode. It's still bad. Oh, that, that is got disgusting. This one game mode that you just consistently lose on, but if it is only the one game mode, then sure you can forgive it. You cannot forgive a team that came second in season one, now on the cusp of getting reverse swept by a team that is only just avoiding relegations for the second time in OPC. This is the nature of this tournament. This is the closeness of all these teams. But you couldn't help but feel after the first two wins that Blank were really one step ahead here. But now, with the series tied two for two, you've got to say those two words. Mega Thunder are on the cusp of a reverse sweep, and it is actually on Blank to step it up because in these last two maps, they have backslid. And by the way, I don't think we've seen a single reverse sweep so far in season two. So if it happens, it will be our first. And that also means uh, Mega would get to, they would get to be the only members of a very specific club, and that is teams that oh, have right. reverse swept blank esports. Just one team. Yeah. But like, here's the other thing that gets really scary for blank is they need this win to contest AHQ. If they get the win, suddenly they're tied with AHQ again, and they can really go for the top four. If blank drop this, you gotta think, their top four hopes are gone. Just about. I mean, they would be relying on AHQ losing some major games against Hong Kong, Ma Hong Kong Attitude, sorry, and Ardian. Well, blank win them, and like and, that's yeah. almost out of the question. It is right? because AHQ look better than Flashwells right now, who just beat Hong Kong Attitude. That's the reality for Blank here, and that's the thing, even then, that only keeps the hope alive of making it into top four, right? If you're the team that went to a full five games against Mega, are you really going to beat the resurgent AHQ? It's a lot of it's a lot of questions. We need a little bit of time to consider all these options again. And certainly Blake need the time even more than we do. So when we come back, the final map of the series in the space of five between Blank and Mega does continue, so don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The final time now in the final series of the evening, Blank taking on Mega so far, two and two apiece. And Mega, they found some momentum here and they are threatening to reverse sweep Blank. We've learned something very important tonight, and that is never compliment Blank Esports because they will prove you wrong, right? The moment I was like, yeah, House is starting to look a lot better with these ultimates. He gets quick melee to death by a Widowmaker. The that was, yeah. by the way, that was sick from yeah, Blank. The mo exactly. That's, the, a, that's a good play. Let's run for the highlight reel. Like, remember that time I killed a Genji with the butt of my gun? And then when I'm like, yeah, their dives are looking really clean and coordinated between, um, between she'll eat you up and Haas, immediately they're like, you know what, let's just all go in different directions and all die. It's like, I think the easiest way for Blank to win right now is for me to say, Blank are looking terrible because apparently reverse psychology wins, but it is gonna be uh. their map pick for the final map pick. And that could well be the saving grace because also they did win hybrid earlier in the night on King's Row and they are gonna take us to Hollywood. And it seems like, you know, when we do get the best of fires, I don't know what it is, but Hollywood tends to be one of those final maps that we do get. I haven't had too many full five map series, more so than season one, but yeah. it's, a, it's a rare treat. Had a lot of fours. A lot of fours lot, this lot season. A lot of fours this season. This has been the season of fours. Thing is, we were saying that we've kind of entered the 3-0 half of this tournament, it felt, we're getting a lot more 3-0s in the second round, Robin. But, but not then, this Yeah, today has just completely proved us wrong. Like, we had the 3-1 with Flash Rules Hong Kong Attitude. Now we're getting the full five from Blank and Mega. I mean, who knows, man? And it's still actually quite unclear exactly by who the way, this. By the way, Gunba has taken off the hat. Yeah, he's revealed he's the revealed big brain. The, now, I, the thing is... He's revealed the hat hair. The thing is, revealed. when you take... When, when he's got the hat on, you now, so far in this season, don't usually see him without the hat. You'd think if you take the hat off, you're revealing your naked brain to the world. That's, it's that's like, a scary concept. It's, it's like when big, uh, bulging, intelligent brain out into the world. It's like when, when you're watching Pokemon and Ash turns his cat backwards, it's like you know it just got real. <laughs> that's what it's like. It's like Gunba's hat's off. It's like, ooh, watch out. He's revealed the big brain and they're ready to go. Is unleashed. It's, it's 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 a limiter. The hand is a limiter. It keeps his <laughs> IQ below 900, but now it can exceed that. He can ex he can at last exceed. <laughs> These will be the most intelligent decisions of all. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait. Yeah. So the thing that has to be appreciated here right now is uh, Mega communicate in three different Action. languages. I just wanna I just wanna touch on that. Like. So to blank. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've, they've got they've got like high Australian and they've got middle Australian and then they've got Hobo <laughs> so one now. Yeah, they got, so they got, they got, they got, got New Zealand, they got the New Zealand and dialect. Australian. Exactly, they got the New Zealand dialect in the mix now, and it's really hard to understand each other. <laughs> and Trill's from Broom, so I don't know what he's saying. Like, that's, just, <laughs> that's, that's too hard to understand. The problem is they keep referring to the payload as an esky, and Hobo gets confused by that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, whereas, like, that's the, the saving grace is in Thai and Korean and English. They just call it a chili bin. Uh, so Mega are all on the same box. page. A box. And everyone knows what box is. That's fine. Everyone on the box. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I can follow that. Mega again out the gate on this triple DPS. And this is exactly what has been working for them so far. Blank have about the worst possible thing to deal with a Pharaoh Mercy here. And this is well read by Mega, well sort of adapted to kind of project what Blank we're going to do on the defense here. And Gumba getting the kill onto Elf does slow things down. And they're going to try and commit off the back of that. But Trill kind of misses the leap there. He's going to have to try and find a way out of this, but they get some damage onto Apudo. So that's one way to get out, is just fight your way out. They get a bunch of kills with the back end. Mega now have to pull back for a moment. And this is great for Blank in two senses. A, yes, they win the fight, but actually B, because Gumba got two of those three kills, he's so close to EMP without even having to charge it through health packs. He just got the damage in there. When you said, like, in two senses, I thought you were going to say, like, it looks good and it smells good. This is going to be the EMP commit. It on tastes good, too. That Mega are just a little split up going in for this fight. Ends it enough out on the sort of outside of this. Can't really help his teammates stuck in this building here with angry monkeys and, I don't know, Mexican hackers. It was really hard to make Sombra sound cool in that regard. But now that the fight is in open ground, actually ends it enough, is able to get a lot of work done. They need to do something to deal with this Mercy specifically so they can pick ends enough. Or you could just ignore me and pick ends it on R first. 
You know what, Blank, you do you. Do you. Well, the you thing do is, you. that's actually fine because Graceful doesn't quite have that raise yet, and by the time that he does <laughs> has it, the work, he actually does get inside just in the nick of time. And they're going to be able to kill the UF anyway. So again, like, the moment we say it, the exact opposite happens. So, uh, Blank are really drawing this one out, though, but now the Kamek can come in with this Rocket Barrage to secure the last few kills, and that is going to be the point cap for Mega. But it was a good contest from Blank, uh, and actually Gunba still was contesting right at the end of that. I was wondering why Mega hadn't capped just yet, and certainly Mega were also wondering why they hadn't capped just yet, and it was because of Gunba. Now he respawns EMP ready to go. They will be set up to compete and contest against Mega. Yeah, Huss has swapped onto the soldier as well to just deal with that Faramasi a little bit better. But they haven't been able to get the setup on the high ground, which would have been ideal because of that delayed kill from Gunver. So now they need to get a fight win to be able to occupy that space. Good That's a hack. good hack. Really hurts Sapruto's mobility, but he's still getting the kills anyway. But it was contesting the payload as they convert some other kills off the back end. They still need to deal with NZNR and Graceful, and they're just not managing it. Eat You Up can't pulse bomb members who fly. Who doesn't commit the self-destruct either. Oh, it's so unfortunate. And I'll tell you what, if Blank do win Hollywood now against Mega, it'll be one off the back of Gumba. But the unfortunate thing is Gumba can't play the game for everyone. There's not enough Gumbas to go around. So for the rest of Blank, you did expect a little bit more. You had a sound barrier. He had other ultimates to commit as well. But Blank just misfiring on their defense. It seems like the, the brain is big, but it doesn't help if you split it up. Like, all right, I'll give you a frontal lobe, I'll give you a left hemisphere. It doesn't work that way. It's just one guy, one brain, and six whole keyboards. But this is the commit now out of blank that they have been needing as they pick in ZNR. Tempo Rez comes out, but Elk dies instantly after. So there is still the opportunity to convert more for blank, but they're struggling. Apuda routes out the healers. And where is the protection for that? That's the self-destruct coming out from Huwu. And sure, it gets NZNR, but the rest of the team is dead anyway. Huwu's gonna lose his mech, gonna get staggered out, and the payload just hasn't really stopped up a whole lot. Oh, Huwu's done a decent job of stalling this one up, but that's all that he can achieve. What the soul will buy Blank is an additional fight here, but what does Blank do in this fight? Because still, you're waiting for the sound barrier commit, you're waiting for Hustan to get the tactical visor, and maybe that is the answer, but you need to see it work. My ultimate is ready. Buddha now with the Dragon Blade. Let's see what he's able to do with it this time. Tito goes very aggressive very early. Sound Barrier out. Now Pudo going to wait that one out as Huss with the Tactical Visor does get white. They need to get just a little bit more than that. Apudo would be an ideal target, actually. And with him being that low, he can't really safely go for a Dragon Blade. So Blank kind of weathered the storm for now. Eat you up. That would be an embarrassing one versus one to lose. But he does come out the better of it. They close out the kills they need. And I think you've got to respect Apudo's decision there to hold the Dragon Blade because as White went down, as no ends and graceful follow through with that Mega, they're going to respawn. They're going to come back in a scenario where Huss no longer has Tactical Visor. The Sound Barrier off the table as well. Apudo now feeling a little bit more comfortable, but a little does he know that Gumba has been saving his transcendence. He's been saving it up. He's been a good boy. He hasn't spent it all in one place. But Apudo's going to go aggressive on that, and that immediately cues out the transcendence and instant conversion onto white. That's what Blank have been needing this whole time. They do lose, eat you up, but again, weathered the storm and are now going to be able to get the damage on T to 1. This is crucial time to get a few more ultimates up for themselves. So well played and well responded by Blank. And this is when the Blank ultimates does start to recharge up and Mega still looking for additional options. In fact, Mega just losing members. I can see going down now. This is something that Mega can work with, but they still need to wait for Graceful. So at the end of the day, you'd also have to think IQT respawns as well. That up pulse bomb just doesn't really get the value. And that's the thing, because of the extra distance that Graceful has to travel compared to RQT, essentially that's an ultimate for nothing. Graceful now does come back with the Transcendence, so double support ultimates from Mega. You've got to see some mileage here because Blank these balls, they don't have enough firepower. At least you've got to imagine so in the sound barrier. They're already starting to tip the scales. Great stick onto NZNR though. Speaking of tip the scales, but losing Huss, they need to convert these kills onto Tiwat and Apudo. But the transcendence from Graceful is going to top them both up. Huru, nice placement on the self-destruct, but not going to catch any people in it specifically. And he hasn't cut them off too much. Blank is still struggling to get these kills over the line. Honestly, Mega largely in the driver's seat. Good trades coming through That's here. Wasted. Huss, yeah, it is very much wasted because he's just miles away from the fight getting corner trapped in Apudo. 
maybe this is a little wasted as well, not necessary to use, but they are going to get the cap over the line off the back. Yeah, well, what they do buy with that is quicker kills because otherwise Eden would have had a, big, a, a much safer time, a much better time stalling the card. Same with Eden as well. So Poo does pick up that nice steady cap on through now. We just got to work with C. Ezra now changing onto the McCree as well, and Hus going onto the Sombra. Rest in pepperonis, Gunba. He had the, he had the, I mean, he had the transcendence, but you definitely don't want to use it in that situation. They do have some ultimates up, though. They need to get that EMP economy going, though. Yeah, they need the EMP quickly. They need everything else, but they do have the time to work with because Mega are running out of time, and they're also running out of charge. They just haven't really got anything to work with now going into C. That's a good collapse onto Akudo. He does pick Gunba before that happens, though, which takes that transcendence off the table. But unless uh, Mega can get more kills, it's not going to count for much. But speaking of get more kills, catching Trill is a good way to go. And they D-Mech Hulu as well. And by picking out these tanks, they're just not allowing these DPSs. Oh, no, why? Off. Nice save onto RQT by Gunba. But the rest of the members are unfortunately dying on the backside of the fight. And this is where you need to see Blank Esports pull the trigger just a little bit. Because so far, the sports are going down. And you're not seeing the result of the sound barriers or the transcendence is coming out. Finally, the EMP available. And this is going to be critical. And oh, no, nope. and it's yep. gone. And because Mega have ultimate, well, you need to counter them out. Well, actually, Apudo dies as well, just showing the Dragon Blade. So there is that. Blank can stabilize with this sound barrier. They need to get the kills, though. And honestly, Ends in Anara and White are largely untouched. And the Spider Puda can rejoin with the Dragon Blade as well. Finally committing the EMP, but they've not got many members to follow up on it. And you have needs to get a lot more than just that one. Pulse Bomb Stick, though, is good onto Elk. And that's what Blank have been needing this whole time. Plus, the self destruct from Hulu to zone them. And now Mega come in a little bit separated. Apudo getting topped off. Whoa, it's not over! Kills. It's absolutely not over because on the cusp of death, he somehow comes back alive and is able to get the kills through, plus the dead eye, plus the damage, and with just over a meter left, now no distance at all, it does happen in overtime, but at no point did Blank hold up Mega completely. And I think Blank uh, kind of felt at the end there, just a little bit comfortable. They thought, look, we're gonna get this defense, the kills are swinging in really good, the EMP from us is good as well. But here comes Mega, all the ultimates they've been saving up, all the ultimates they charged in the middle of that engagement. Suddenly, they start paying off. You have a Dragon Blade from Apudo. White gets a Dead Eye kill as well, and everything falls into place from Mega. And despite being in the overtime, they get it across the line. And that's what counts at the end of the day. They will secure a time bank. Now, the one thing that does have to be respected is last escort, uh, sorry, hybrid rather, that these two teams had was on King's Row. It was Blank attacking first. This time, of course, it is Mega. But Blank had time in the time bank. Mega kept in overtime. And it was about two and a half minutes for Blank as well. So that's what they're going to carry into this. Look, if they can cap with just any time on the clock here, then they get an advantageous situation. They would only need to cap a third in that time bank. If they cap it in overtime, though, we go to Golden Point. That's really one of the better options here for Mega. Ultimately, though, they just want to stop up Blank at some point on the defense. Full stop. Oh man, a best of five with the golden point is. That's about. It's past as, my bedtime, is what it that's is. That's about as close as you can possibly cut it. The final map <laughs> and a best of five, two and two, and what decides it is a golden cap. Yeah. Damn. It would be. Uh, it's pretty poetic, isn't it? Almost. Yeah, and then you go to a different Blizzard game. So you yeah. play a best you of play five. And and then Heroes you play Storm. Heroes of the Storm. Then you play Hearthstone. And then Starcraft. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's yeah. uh. And then you go to Hanamura and jump on an arcade. Yeah, you play, <laughs> you play whatever it is game that's in there. Two, one. Attack commencing. Well, Catch this is now the attack for Black. Let's see if they can actually get it to time bank with a bit of time on the clock. I, I want to, I want to know how many heroes White has played tonight because now he's onto the Sombra. So <laughs> let's see if he can get it done yeah. on there as well. Winston's lab, can you give us that stat? It's like tonight he has played more heroes than he has played in the entire season. He's that a, is also because he's a diva player he has, normally. He has played more heroes than there are in Overwatch. That's how good he is. But speaking of, he's getting pressured on the health pack, so they're able to get that opening kill. Chill, though, a little bit too deep in that. They haven't got the return kill on Tidua just yet. Now, losing who is Mech, they're struggling to get these closeouts here, Blank, and they're losing members for it. Oh, they, uh, 
But stabilization so far on the Mega side, it's just even trades and even trades. You've got to think, start to favor Blank over the long run. But Blank, is that out? It's uneven. <laughs> yeah, it's uneven now. It was even to start with, but Mega, while well, they turn things around very Yeah, quickly. why do we say anything, right? Why do we say anything? Yeah, the moment, well, it moment, wasn't incorrect. It was correct yeah, up until the point. Exactly, you're certainly not wrong. Even trades favor Blank, but of course, the moment you say that, they stop trading even, and they just lose about two or three members. The reality was, they had also lost oh, Huru's mech in there as well, which is actually what swung it towards Mega. Let's see, what a week's worth of playing Triple D's PS and get Mega here. The EMP is pretty good, at least Scumbler goes down. Yeah, that's not a bad start. They commit the Primal Rage onto it as well, which is maybe a little more than was necessary. Blank's gonna be able to just retreat and come back in. Yeah, Blank, uh, take that one onto the chin. And a well, well played kind of sort of decision making from Blank to just say, we're gonna back off, not gonna try and overextend ourselves in a scenario where Mega really wanna commit their ultimates, just let them commit. Then we're gonna come back and use our own. Start to get into the scenario where Husk gets a Dragon Blade. Start to get in the scenario where the sound power really counts as well. Speaking of. You only got two people. Oh no. But it's enough to at least wither the storm from T to 1. They get the pressure on. They need to convert these kills though. That's all that's going to matter. And they lose Trill just shy of a Primal Rage. They get the kills onto NZNR and White though. And that's what they've been after. Self-destruct placed in from Huru as well to get the rest of these members uh, kind of flushed out as it were. And Apudo still waiting on that Dragon Blade. At least gets pulled back to a health pack, but they're on the back foot on this one. And White dying at 97% is actually really important as well because the EMP could have been a real factor and it still will be a factor, but he has to come in now. The sound barrier being committed and so is the EMP. Oh, but it stops up the transcendence from Gunbird. It turns out the timing is perfect. They do get a trade kill on T1. Huss again just finding nothing with the Dragon Blade. He'll just like hold it out threateningly like a scorpion stinger. Eat you up, however, is going to keep his team in it. Not until Apudo pulls out the Dragon Blade, though, and closes it out. Two thirds for Blank is all they're going to get for now. And Gunver's like, where did my team go? Yeah, and Apudo's got the Scorpion pincers in the front, and those are far more effective in a straight up fight. The Stinger is more effective if you can land it, but so far, scary. Blank, they need to land it. Sting. Apparently, the, uh, the bigger the Stinger, the less threatening the Scorpion. Is you that like a yeah. uh, rule of thumb? Is that like a compensator stinger? Like yeah, yeah, well, like actually, literally, yes, right? Because like they have to just look threatening since the venom itself isn't as deadly. That's and does that scorpion then drive a really big pickup? That's the real it question. Does. It does. We'll have to find out next a time. A Toyota Hilux Surf and I E Up is instantly going to convert on T D One. Is what they've been needing this whole time. Gunbird and Graceful match transcendence, and honestly now Mega have to hold out for that EMP, but they lose the DPS, and so it doesn't look like they'll be able to do much with that EMP. May not even be able to get it off anyway, and it's just White alone at the point, smartly gonna hold on to, well, I mean, he doesn't even have it, but uh, not gonna force it out, not gonna try Technically holding on to it. Yeah. Not wrong, you're not wrong. It's kind of hard to use. <laughs> so you can't whip your EMP if you ain't got it up. Oh, well, for Mega now, that was a pretty good hold, all things considered, because Blank Esports only barely got it over, just shy of the overtime now working with. Barely two minutes and 27 seconds remaining. It's not a lot to get through onto B. Blank's goal here should be to cap without getting into the overtime. If they can do that, suddenly they have the option to get into C with a decent time. They need to get a really high momentum street space in order to achieve that. Huss having a little bit more success now on the McCree. Hold on, I shouldn't say that because that means he's instantly going to die. That's a good force out of the Primal Rage so that Watt can preserve his life. And Blank currently still got the payload underway. This is good momentum now from Blank. You talk about the fact that Blank Last needed that movement and Mega Thunder. Well, they show us how to stop it. <laughs> yeah. They do get the return kill though, so this is definitely not over yet. And Huss has a closer respawn. So if they can convert this kill onto White, indeed they can. Apudo's got a Dragon Blade, but it may just not be safe for him to use it again. May just need to hold on to it. Can't whip your Dragon Blade if you don't actually use it. And uh, they're trying to get the follow-up to close out the kill on him. Indeed they do. Now this is staggered kills. Blank able to take the fight win despite losing Huss early. And the last kill onto Apudo is actually the most important one because that's the most important player that Mega have to wait for here. Everybody else coming up doesn't really matter. It's a Poodle with the Dragon Blade that's actually going to get them that defensive win. But now RQT and Gumba are well set up to counter it. Well, well set up to counter it. They've got some useful ultimates here, Mega. But they're very volatile ultimates. They need to convert very hard off them. This is a big commit already. Apudo looking to get aggressive, but there's these ultimates that can be committed now as Gunby uses the Transcendence. And Apudo just doesn't find anything. Eat you up, on the other hand, does. And now they are much leaner on those ultimates. White also got nothing with that tactic advisor. They do still lose Huss in the fight because it's like, you know, grass, green, sky, blue, Huss dead. 
Who would go able to get the zoning with the self-destruct so that the team can close out these last few kills? Now Apudo again looking like he's going to end up getting staggered out here. And that's again going to be the most important kill if they can get that very late as Blank Esports looking to cap this one out. Cheetah Watch is going to say, he's just going to unfortunately give his life away to try and bleed as much time out. And now Blank Esports, if they can get this camp, they're going to do it just shy once more of that overtime. 1 minute 51 Agus. to get over the line for C. It is certainly possible, but very difficult. Looking like it may just be a golden point situation at best right now. Mega, though, still had the opportunity to fully uh -oh. hold. Oh. Uh -huh. oh. It's going to be the winner. Uh, usually I'd be like, no, this is not where you want to pull out a winner maker. But, but since you know White's been hitting shots, yeah, sure, pull it out. Well, ends it in ours. <laughs> Speaking of hitting shots, gonna get a headshot on Trill to secure that one for good measure. Huss, a pulse bomb yeah, headshot. Huss needs to get this EMP up. They don't actually have much time to charge it. Yeah. All right, and this is kind of working for Mega because if White can just get a single pick or two, just kind of force Trill to jump on him and really contest him again, waste a lot of time on the blank esports side just to deal with White. Then this one to make it work, uh, pick starts to really work for them. But with one minute remaining now, the stall game becomes quite important for Mega. The reality is the sight lines are pretty clean and clear, right? Assuming there's no Winston bubbles and uh, defense matrices out of Uwu. If he does get just a single pill, uh, pill, pick, pill, combine the two, it's pill. On to RKT of Gunma then. This is paid off, but that's a good place Pulse Bomb to keep White out of the fight while Blank get into it. They force back Apudo as well. Haven't got the kills just yet though. Good fresh on the internet. Good spawn Aggressive camp. from Trill to catch Apudo. Good spawn cam and deep. They still need to get just a bit more. Here's that EMP from Huss though. He's got to commit it. And they've actually got the ability to push this over with a little bit of time on the clock. He commits, but they haven't got the follow up. Who was going to get some damage done, but ends it. And now he's still in the fight. Respawn from Apudo. Dragon Blade out looking to get the kills. Who has got to self destruct? and he has got to throw it out. He gets one with it, and Blank is still in this. No way! Oh, just under. Nearly going to get they it. they got a sort of overtime. Not quite this stop. I've got to actually get it across the line as well here, Blank, as much as Megan need to stall it into overtime, which they now have, but they can still close this out. They can still stabilize. The respawns are much longer for Blank, but Blank is still getting the kills. Ends it in half. He's trying to set up on the back line, but not in enough time. We're just going to a flat minute-by-minute minute time back. And that's about as even as you can really cut it. Both teams just barely getting over the line. And suddenly, you do have to go back and question the Widowmaker pick just a little bit because he kind of expected White to get a few more kills than he did. He got two kills, but not impactful enough to really get his team ahead because by that time, Mega were already severely behind in player numbers. White then himself has to jump on the payload, put his body on there. Enzonar tries to get clever on the side, but the timing is just unfortunately off. I just want to say, like, I think I've got some grey hairs after this match, eh? Like, it's just From such Ginger a roller coaster. Like, it's like, who knows what Mega are going to play next? Who knows what heroes are going to pull out? Who knows how Huss is going to die next? I mean, it's just, there's so much drama. Man, I love Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I do know. I don't know much. I don't know what... Mega are going to play, but I do know that I love Overwatch. And that becomes a very difficult thing for Blank to predict as well, because what exactly is Mega going to play? If you want to try and counter strat them from a compositional point of view, you have to be very good at now predicting what you think they're going to do. And that's hard because they played so many different things. White's gone on just about every single DPS hero that's possible. Anything can really happen. What if they just play six DPS? Like, I wouldn't put it past this I, at this point. Okay, that, that would be a very poor way to throw away this game when it's I, so close. I mean, that is, yeah, like, that's the truth, sure. But, like, I also feel like they would pull it off for some reason. But in any case, it is still going to be triple DPS. This time, white onto the McCree. All right, well, we've already seen Gumma have a lot of success on the camp A defensive Sombra. If we can get that success again. We're already oh, hey, seeing it. We're go. already seeing it. Oh, buddy, dead. Never mind. <laughs> Just don't, you can't speak too soon about this team. Enzin and R, good flank around the side. They're getting some pressure in. They haven't quite closed out on Enzin and R either. He gets RQT in the head with a quick melee. But the pressure is actually there out of the rest of flank. And Enzin and R did have to back off. So now they have burned down a lot of Mega's very short clock. The counter explosiveness of the triple DPS rears its ugly head around. This is when the lack of HP, the lack of sustain, the lack of tanking and defense matrix really does hurt Mega, especially when you consider that the health pack that they want to go for, the Mega on the side, is always hacked. So now Mega, the final opportunity. We may see a scenario where they don't get attacked. 
They do get the overtime, but they lose into it. Now that's the EMP committed onto the race. And indeed, looking like the don't get a tick situation as it's all about close out here. And this time, Hush didn't die. It's uh, frankly a miracle. And Apudo, the last one left, he will die. The gong sounds. That's going to be the hold. Now, Blank only need a third to close out the series at long last. And I think it becomes that much more possible for Blank to win it here. But it's still very possible that we go to the golden point. All <laughs> Mega got to do for one minute is win one team fight, get themselves slightly ahead, and that's it. We're going to a golden point, and anything still could happen there. It's just so hard to call. You just never know. I mean, for Blank, the saving grace, I suppose, is that they are so favored on control, they may not mind going to Golden Point, but I mean, look, they're in the position to win it now. A third is achievable in a single push. Thankfully, we, we're back in with the feed. This, this would be a very poor time to just swap. Show's over, fellas. Yep. We won't know who was. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> that would be even worse than just the perpetual tiebreaker, like where you go into Heroes of the Storm and then you go into Hearthstone and you go into, like, I don't know, Diablo. Like, the only thing worse than that would be you just never find out. There was like, it was like there was, um, <clears throat> like there was that Hearthstone match recently between uh, Pin Ping Ho and I can't remember the other guy. And they were both playing Fatigue Warrior, oh, and it just yeah, went to maximum yeah. turns. It did. It just went like, it did. imagine and one, if that was possible one, in Overwatch. One guy ended with 500 yeah. armor, that's What right. if that was possible in Overwatch? It just goes to maximum time bank. Like, eventually you just run well, out Well, I have heard the, the urban myth, the urban legend of the times, you heard this correctly, 20 Dude. times time bank. Word. And like... We're gonna be here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's not possible because it just has to be a one-third hold now for Blank. Speaking of... This is, this is scary because White, look, he doesn't really have too much time to build an EMP, but if he does get it, it could just be lights out. Or if a kill comes through quickly from Blank, it could be lights out for Mega. Really hard to say. Oh, the first pick here has got to be so important in an older scenario. Drills oh. alone! Oh. Oh. 75 health, but now they're cutting the pressure on as they convert onto Graceful and Elk. Ends in it. Blank ah, Dawn is slow. He could be down. And yes, Blank is doing it at long last. But hold on, maybe I shouldn't say that because you don't want to speak too soon. But never mind. Ooh. This time they deliver. And yes, at long last. Man, they ran it out as long as it possibly could have. It's like the ultimate stall tactic from Mega Thunder. But ultimately, yes, it is Blank who are going to close out the series. Can I go home now? I, well, I, I don't, I, this is a very difficult, uh, honestly, this is this is kind of sadistic, but I would have liked to have seen the Golden Cap. It would have been a very <laughs> fitting finish. It kind of would have, there would have been something poetic about it, but unfortunately we're not going to see that. Or indeed, fortunately, if you are a Blank fan, because they have picked up that crucial win, it was not clean. I'll tell you what, it it's... was not comfortable, but they are still in contention for playoffs, and that's what oh, matters. Man. They, they cut it so close. It is hard to be a blank fan because you just you just never know. You cannot ever get comfortable and say, "Oh, I think blank are favourite here." No, they'll they'll test you on that. They cut it so close, like you felt the breeze, you know, as as the blade went past. I like, think actually, I think cutting. actually, even if you're on the mega side, you have to be somewhat. Yes, you are disappointed because you came so close to winning, but also you got to be quite pleased with just how close you got that match. So it's one of those moments where you lose, but you can't even be mad about it because it was a really good series. The truth is they actually had the exact same result against Hong Kong Attitude when they played. It was close in a lot of ways, and unfortunately they couldn't get it over the line, but you gotta be pleased enough with the closeness because it is a mark of your own improvement as a team. And when we were comparing them earlier in the night to Machi, who have not been able to keep pace with the improvement, like, look, this is the evidence of that, right? Machi got 3-0'd by Blank. Mega were at least able to hold their own. So even though the scoreline between those two teams is close, they are only one placement apart, sixth and seventh respectively. The skill level for Mega is just that much higher. They are currently the kind of skill floor that you must meet in order to be in contention. And also, uh, apologies just for the uh, few uh, moments of lag, I suppose, that we're getting. And this here, of course, the replay of Mega, kind of on their indomitable march here. Took them a while, but they were also not really stopped up in earnest by Blank. Yeah, there's a few interesting moments on the Blank side because they always, you always felt like they had the ultimates to deal with Mega, but never really 
decided as a team, this is where we're going to make our stand. Are we going to be holding here? Do we back off and regroup? Do we save ultimates? Do we use them? And finally, you know, it just comes down to the fact that Mega were a little bit more decisive. They found the picks they needed. White was actually a big factor here. And actually, White did a great job throughout the entire series. Everything he has played has been reasonably effective. And there hasn't really been too many moments where you thought, ooh, White's performance wasn't really up to scratch. I think at the end of the day, despite Mega losing, you can't really say White was any part of that loss. In fact, if anything, it was part of their victories. Yeah, and I mean, look, they ran triple DPS. They ran it in like every way, shape and form possible, it felt. And every single time it was actually really strong. Maybe this is just this kind of pocket strat that Mega have that they were wanting to pull out here tonight. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough to get the win altogether, but again, you know, I've got to go back to what I said a moment ago. In a couple of times now, they've actually come really close. Look, once upon a time, uh, you know, back when they were Fireball, slightly different lineup, but back when they were Fireball, they could have never dreamed of going five games against Blank. To the final yeah. time bank second. Yeah, exactly. And like. probably wouldn't have been able to do it all that much against Hong Kong Attitude either in season one. So this has been a huge mark of progress for this team. Let's take a look now, another replay here. As the payload approaches the Terminus, and this is where they're able to push it over the line. It's only 20 seconds remaining as well. It looked like it was nearly over for Mega, so this is very important. You pay attention to exactly what Blank and how Blank handled this. And White, once more, doing a great job. Killing both supports is actually part of the reason that Mega get this across the line. A Apuru with the Dragon Blade as well. Incident R, if I'm not mistaken, end up picking, uh, ends up getting something from a Jedi, but uh, it is really off the back of the Dragon Blade that start, things start to look really good. Exactly, and that's the thing is, again, you sit there going, it seemed that Blank had all the ultimates to deal with it. They had had the sound barrier, they had the transcendence, they had the EMP, but they just didn't get the mileage. They didn't get the kill conversion off any of those. And when all was said and done, Mega were just getting kills, they were just getting frags, and then they had a couple of ultimates at the very end to push it over the line for themselves. And that's where I had to question as well, did Inzanar get that dead? I'm pretty sure he did, but the reason you weren't too sure is he started at the top of the replay with what, less than 50% yeah, ultra, yeah. It's like 40, or is it 20 or 40, something like that. And it's like, does he get a dead eye here? Because it's crazy to think a McCree builds it up that quickly, but That's absolutely. That's so many headshots he was landing. He just landed a ton of shots right towards the end. So credit to the guy. And it's like, they, they can just kind of put anyone on anything right now. It feels like NZNR is comfortably playing the Genji, comfortably plays the He didn't play the Genji. He has in the past though, that's the thing. He can do that still. You do tend to put a Pudo on that, don't get me wrong, but he can pull out the McCree, he can pull out the Soldier if he wanted. They've got all these options for themselves. Player of the game, however, is going to go to Trill, and I think rightfully so. We talked about the cleanliness of the dives. Now look, the cleanliness vanished after game two. There was no more cleanliness, but there wasn't really much cleanliness out of Mega it's either. Like my bathroom. So when it vanished after it was assaulted. Um, it, 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 the thing is, for those first two maps where Blank won in very convincing fashion, Trill and the coordination between him, uh, Huss, and Eat You Up was really, really solid. I think that's a very well-earned player of the game. It's good to see the tanks receive, uh, receiving some love as well. I might have even said, look, Gumba on Hollywood was pretty solid, especially when you consider his home play. I sort of mentioned there, but if anyone was going to bring it together for Blank on the final map, it was going to be Gumba, and he was doing a lot of that work. Most of the legwork done in the early stages was from Gumba's Sombra. It was a bit of a shame to see him change off into Street's phase, because you typically see players like Mui continue playing the Sombra throughout the entire Hollywood um, streets, even into some phases of the sea. But finally, you do swap off in the sea. So for Gumba, he gave that early lead to Blank. But Trill, you got to give it to the guys, or he had a great performance. And of course, with it, they do pick up the win. So taking a bit of a recap of the night, of course, to kick it off, we had Ardian taking on Machi, a 3-0 for them, and very much an expected one. Then Hong Kong Attitude, their last chance to beat Flash Wolves in the regular season, unfortunately falling short of the mark, going down 3-1. to one. And then just now, Blank going to the full five against Mega Thunder. So about as hard a fought series for Blank as possible. They stay in the running now for that top four, and we'll see that in the standings. So there you have, I mean, we know Ardian are the best team in this tournament. That is an established fact right now. But with the win, Flash Wolves against Hong Kong Attitude tonight, they're actually much more secure in that second place than they have been earlier on in this tournament, right? 
The middle of the pack is still a little bit less defined. The third to fifth place is still kind of anyone's game, but it's kind of narrowed down. For a moment, second all the way through to about sixth or seventh could have really been anyone's game. But now it is just those three teams, Hong Kong Attitude, AHQ, and Blank, in contention for those final two playoff spots. And like I said, with that win tonight, Blank do just barely stay in the running. Now, hopefully we'll be getting some, uh, some words from the Blank side in a few moments. But yeah, absolutely, this had to be such an important win for Blank because otherwise, they would have been staring under the barrel of a potential loss. But now let's go to the stage with Eda. Why are you so angry? Your match we make up was very intense. Do you have something to say or what do you think about this? Um, it's really tiring. Like, I had a bad game as well, personally. And I honestly think it shouldn't have gone this way as well. It was, I think we just stopped playing the game after the first two matches and got complacent. And, yeah. Oh,他觉得也非常的累，然后呃，他原本觉得应该表现得更好的，那他觉得在第二张地图后的确有点松懈了。因为本来以为我们也以为二比零就是要获胜，但再来是因为后来外者夺命的发挥非常的亮眼
It's been a pretty long day for us. It's been a pretty long series all around 3-0, 3-1, and 3-2. That's like the progression. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. nice and clean. <laughs> that, at least, I can I can be quite happy about. So, you know. Exactly. That's, so, uh, course, that calms down my OCD just a little bit. <laughs> so, of course, tomorrow, you know, we're in a similar situation where you've got a string of matches you do expect to go one way. But you've got to be fair in saying after tonight, you really just don't know. Blank cannot afford to have any more rough performances. And if Mega keep having good performances, then maybe they are actually going to be kingmaker here and determine who between AHQ and Blank gets that fourth place spot. All right, well, that's all going to That's it. Going to That's pretty much all from us tonight. Now I struggle to get that one out. <laughs> it's but, been uh, a long night. It, it certainly <laughs> has. So we're going to wrap things up over on this side. I've been Kevin Ever Walker joined with me. The entire evening has been Matt Pixie Carroll. And RPC Season 2 action does continue tomorrow night. So we'll see you then.